earth. Let's get the main screen turned on. I gotta say, I've been a little cold today, so I'm, you know, might, I might have to use my, my new blanket here oh, to keep myself warm. Oh, God, that is so comfy and soft, you know? Uh, although it will make it a little hard to use the keyboard, so may, maybe I'll have to put it aside and just, just do this. Oh, what's that? My new Christmas sweater? Oh, well, thank you for asking. It is awfully nice, isn't it? Oh, hmm. Oh, you know, but actually, you know, now that the stream is starting up, my light's on, I am starting to feel a little bit warm. So let me take off the sweater here. Yeah, oh, that's gonna be much better. Oh yeah, much more comfortable way to stream now. I think we can all agree. Ooh, that's the good stuff. Excellent, all right. <laughs> I might've gotten a slight, slight gift bag box from, uh, from Paradox. Let me take a sip out of my uh, my new mug here. Excellent, love that. Mmm. Ah. Refreshing, refreshing water. Mug filled with the tears of my enemies, my defeated enemies. That's good. I've got my new, uh, I've got my new canine companion to keep me company as well, and keep all our prisoners in line here from Prison Architect. It was a very good day yesterday. I got a box of stuff that was excellent. Ah, it was really, really wonderful. <laughs> Unfortunately, all I can do is wear the shirt. We can't play the game yet. Is there a little bit of white fuzz on here? There's a little bit of white fuzz on there. Let's get rid of that. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Waiting for Quill to pull down his pants and show some Stellaris underwear. Oh, I do have a Stellaris um, mouse pad that's quite lovely. I don't remember where I put it. I couldn't wear it. But uh, yeah, at some point, I'm currently using an old EU4 mouse pad, which is beautiful, but is getting worn. And I don't want to use the uh, the Stellaris one yet if I don't have to. I'll show you this, like the old EU4. Oh, it's see-through from the green screen, but it's a really, really lovely mouse pad. It was so nice that I was like, oh, I could even hang this up or something. I'm like, no, you know what? I'll use it. Or, yeah. and, you know, it's so easy for us to be like to not want to use something, right? Because it's it's sort of pretty or interesting or this or that or whatever. And then it just sits around and collects dust. You never see it. Every couple of years you go through some boxes. You're like, hey, this thing. And then eventually you get tired of it and just throw it out. Like, just just use your things. It's okay. It's okay. And then you get to enjoy them day to day. And at some point they go away, but part of what sometimes makes life nice is that certain things end sometimes, you know? So you appreciate it when you got them. We got lots of gift subs today. Thank you very much, uh, everyone who contributed to that. And just now we got, I am, I'm just Wiggles has gifted 10 gift subs. Thank you very much over there. We also had some gift subs coming in from our Tremius as well as Wimey. If I missed any others, I apologize. Um, Kuma, hey, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the whiskey and chocolate contribution. Oh, there was some, uh, uh, Oh, we got, okay, we got double. So we got Cool Man coming in just now to say, I have changed my name again to Cooler Man Nacho. It was Cool Man Santa during the holidays. Also, I've been having drink, <laughs> you have been drinking Plump Helmet wine since 3 p.m. today. So off your rocker already. <whistles> also, how drunk or do you need today? Hey, cool Man, you're just getting into the mood for Dwarf Fortress is the way it works. Also, the reminder to make lots of wine and spice drum. I'm gonna see what we can do. You got a lot of plans today. I have my, I have my notepad here, ready with lots of notes for things that I wanna do today. So very excited to talk about that. Uh, we also have Gary the Cormorant coming in. Thank you very much for the contribution to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund, the Beer and Plump Helmet Fund. Uh, did you hear the news reports about a psychic who escaped from prison? Police are looking for a small, medium, at large. I think you missed a word, Gary. I'm so sorry. Oh, I think it's a dwarf psychic who escaped from prison, right? Police are looking for a small, medium, at large. It is a classic, though. Thank you very much for that. We got some resubs. We got Four Star Flood coming in at 84 months right now. Scaver at 83. Seven months time, that is insane. Real Luckless at 44 months. Phoenix at five months with Prime. Remember that Prime subscription. Pantera at 59 months. Rastislav at uh, 13 months. Daedalus at 83. Salira at 45. Who said, don't catch me live often. Well, I'm happy you could be here today, Salira. A couple people saying they're off work today or various things and are catching a stream for the first time in a while. I'm just Wiggles actually just resubbed for 17 months as well. Henzo at 62, Burkle Blade at 32, uh, Temporal Mouse at seven months, Kaylee BG at 29 months. We've got that Ifrit guys resubbed for 43, Shuddy at 38, Flamebeard at 93 months, Rex Axwatch at 53 months. Oh yeah, that's right, talking about your internship for the Steel Mill. That was really interesting. Uh, Hull at seven months, Weird Darkness at 32, uh, Ruben Cluns at 27 months, Carrot 
in at 16 months. Thank you for someone else who said they hadn't been around in a while. Um, thank you very much for that. Let's get dwarfing, shall we? All right. So I have actually been playing a bunch of Dwarf Fortress Week in my own personal fortress. It's been going awesome. Uh, um, I've been telling, again, family here is probably sick of hearing about Dwarf Fortress because I keep telling about stuff that's been happening on the fort, but I've been really excited to get back to this one. Um, first thing we're gonna do, so I'm gonna give a little tour of the fortress for the people who weren't here maybe for the last stream. Uh, keep everyone, catch everyone up to date. Uh, but the first thing I do wanna address is this outer wall. Right at the end of the last stream, I'm like, you know what, it's time to build an outer wall. And I just dragged it out and so we ended the stream there. And man, am I happy we ended the stream there and not continue because this wall, stupid, annoying, boring. I mean, I was gonna do a little bit more with it, but it's like, no, this is totally wrong. As soon as I ended the stream, I looked at it and I'm like, this isn't what I wanna do for an outer wall. So before any dwarves start building here, I wanna make sure to go through, and I'm just gonna cancel this, which is annoying, because I don't think, while you can use designate to remove construction that's been put in place, then you can do a box select for that. I don't think there's any way to sort of box select canceling construction. Someone knows about a way you can you can let me know, um, but like designate there's designate remove construction, but it doesn't work on on this. Um, so yeah, I I don't know if there's a way to do it that's a little bit faster than mousing and hitting X on every single one of these, uh, including the bridge. There you go. Call that a wall? More of a wall? It isn't. Haha! <laughs> we got whiskey and chocolate from Wimey. Hey Wimey, here's a little donation. Thank you very much, Wimey. All right, there. Outer wall done. We're gonna rebuild this uh, in just a second over here. Um, probably before we actually unpause, just build an anti-wall. Hey, Malagasrix, thank you as well. Been watching your YouTube since Civ 5 came out. Love your content. Thanks for getting me into Dwarf Fortress. Well, thank you for being around. Thank you for uh, supporting the stream as well. Mm, how about Star Fortress? Well, the big thing is we are going to have seven towers, right, for our fortress, which is themed around the number seven. We're, we're referring to this as the, uh, the the fortress of seven pillars, the seven pillars of dwarven civilian society. We've got seven casts involved, um, so we're going to be doing we're going to be doing a thing. So let's wait on that. Here's the surface. Oh, it's wonderful. It's lovely. We've got we've got a little bit of inner wall with a gate over here, and actually it is a uh, it is a three story building. Um, We've got uh, this area over here, if I zoomify a little bit. Uh, so this hasn't happened yet, but fortifications are gonna be car carved into the wall, basically arrow slits. And we already have a crossbow um, militia that, or crossbow squad that is responsible for patrolling this little inner wall, although without the arrow slits, it ain't doing much for them right now. Um, and they also have a little barracks over here that we're gonna develop. The second floor of this tower is going to be the uh, the, the living space for this military squad uh, as well. And then the, the ceiling is being roofed up over there two. If we follow down, so we do have a uh, over here, it's going to be a little hard to see with this graphic set, um, but there's a ramp leading downwards over here as well as the staircase. Uh, the staircase is a much shorter way to get down into our fort, um, but uh, wagons can't go down staircases and we want the wagon to go deep into our fort to minimize some of the uh, walking time. Plus it's going to be a really impressive entrance. We want all the uh, merchants to be very wowed. So we got the stairs to sort of fast that, uh, entrance for the dwarves. We're going to be surrounding this with traps later on uh, because you can't really trap your ramp because the problem is that the traps will block um, wagons. So the traders can still come in, but they can't bring the wagons across your traps. So we can't trap the uh, um, the ramp, but we'll be able to trap around the stairs, which is something that we're going to do. Because monsters that come that try to sneak into the fort should take the staircase as well, because it is a shorter way in, so then they should trigger the traps. We shall see. Uh, we got more whiskey and chocolate contributions. We got Cool Man Nachos is back. Uh, oh, you can add the S to Cooler Man Nachos since the name was taken. Oh, also my father did love the wine opener. Oh yes, it was a really beautiful wine opener uh, that you got your father for uh, for the holidays there, Cool Man. That was really beautiful. Oh, and a joke. What did the dwarf say to the elf about lacking of trees? The trees weren't here to begin with, since charcoal of trees. Did we turn all the trees into charcoal? I mean, that's sort of what we're doing here. Uh, we got a few trees that are being chopped down uh, and we'll, we'll take a look at the, the state of our stores relatively soon. Uh, Keridan, thank you very much for the whiskey and chocolate as well. Want to send a nice ping about how much I've enjoyed the content since 2011. I don't usually watch Twitch live, but had to come around for seven pillars after binging it. But Mubadas bot decided it was spam time me out. Oh no, I'm sorry, Keridan. I missed it. I know there was a couple messages I had to approve uh, in chat, but I must've missed yours in there. Uh, Halco, hey, thank you as well. Here's some coins to the Dwarven Treasury. Well, thank you very much, Halko Mahuli and MJ as well. A dwarf walks out of a bar, then he wakes up screaming. <laughs> uh, it reminds me of um, 
uh, Acquisitions Incorporated, uh, one of the characters, Bindwin, um, he talked about how like this terrible shame had befallen his father. His, his father, something bad had happened to his father, um, and he was so upset that he quit drinking. Absolutely tragic. Thank you very much, MJ and Halco and Caridin and Cool Man just now. And then Mala and Waimi and Geary uh, earlier. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Are you looking forward to when they eventually release Dwarf Fortress on Steam? Oh, hell yes, Burko. Very, very much. If nothing else, because it's going to bring more people into Dwarf Fortress. It's going to be a wonderful thing. All right. So we're going to head down over here. So these first couple of floors are going to be a little bit boring. We've got these are our ramps over here. And you can see our staircase. we got a little kitty cat over there. Excellent. We're going to go down so we can see the ramps. They have the, you know, sort of flow sideways. we got a hallway here. We're going to be doing a bit of turnaround. The idea is we're going to use these hallways as part of the fence. Because, again, the staircases themselves are going to be a little bit more um, just bare. We might even block them off with switches and things like that and really force uh, anyone who wants to invade to maybe go down some of these ramps over here. This ramp here is just a, it was actually kind of a little bit of a misclick. Um, it's fine because caravans can go across there, but conceivably what we might do is we might floor this area later on just to patch that a bit. Uh, it wasn't a misclick. I guess I changed my mind about where I was going to go with the path because I wanted to go long and then sort of turn around. Uh, this area here we've dug out a little bit because there's some limonite over here. Uh, last stream I got a little bit confused in my head between limonite and lignite. Um, it's like, because I knew we had limonite, which is an iron bearing ore, but there was a moment where I was like, wait, is this lignite, which is coal? Anyway, so that's how we're getting our iron. Down, 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 down. You can see uh, right over here, our little hallway makes a little bit of a turnaround, comes back down here, and then we enter our grand hallway over here, which actually isn't done because what we're going to do later is we're going to dig it down one Z level, except for the hallway that comes in over here. It, what's going to happen is it's going to stay up and then ramp down in the middle. So the idea is you're going to be entering into this grand entrance hall in sort of this elevated bridge position. So kind of looking down on all the works and everything, and then you're going to ramp down. And then under the bridge, like I want to do is carve out some things, some little niches in there for something, uh, maybe for the storage of mugs that we're going to use for trading, that sort of thing. So we've still got some work pending over here uh, that I'm very excited for. A couple of switches. One controls the bridge right here. One controls the one... Um, in the gate up above. All these are going to be moved later on. But all this is still considered, it will be considered the outer fort. We got a few more workshops just left in here for that was temporary uh, setup from early on because we are developing the proper fort. Now, if we go down, 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 down over here, zoom out a little bit, make it a little easier to track down 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 another defensive hallway that we can load up with various traps and defenses and things and then we get to the actual center staircase that will be um the entrance to our our fort proper our personal fort where our dwarves will live and what we have here is because we've divided our dwarven society into seven casts we have one floor dedicated to each particular cast or actually um they're being uh, laid out in with five five floor intervals so really each one has well up to, i guess five different levels to operate on. So on floor 120, Z level 120, is where we in, in, um, discover the territory that has been allocated to the stone knockers, the, the cast of dwarves responsible for mining and masonry and rock crafts, um, engraving and gem cutting. Maybe a couple other things, but yeah, that suggests. Any, anything that involves working with stone. Later on, I think they might be responsible for glass making as well because I think that would sort of fall under their purview. I don't know if we have access to any sand, which is too bad, because it would be nice, because what we could do is we could augment our rock mugs with glass mugs. And that would be kind of cool, diversify things just a little bit, but staying within the mug realm. I did go and designate this area here to be dug out. I want to make this a uh, just a stone stockpile um, with some nice uh, wheelbarrows to make it a little easier. Because technically, there's a little stockpile here, this little cross between our mason's workshop. Well, two of these are craft source workshops and two of them are mason workshops. Um, but I really want to keep more stone over here uh, just to make sure that the actual masons and craft dwarfs never have to haul the stone themselves. It's going to be the work of the peasants to do that, right? I don't want one of our masons to have to go down a bunch of levels to find a rock to bring back up here because it's quite slow. The advantage of uh, using the peasants is A, they're less important, but B, the stockpiles can have wheelbarrows which are much faster for moving the stones around. So that would be the ideal. And the masons just have to go here to bring the stone over. So we'll see something about that. Over here we have our um, our gem cutters workshop. Uh, we don't have any tasks assigned over here because I believe we are using DS Hack auto cut gems over here to do that. So it should automatically cut gems to be cut. The other way to do it, which I'm quite keen on, also requires DF Hack, unfortunately. Um, what you can do is you can go to your jeweler's workshop here, pick any gem to be cut. So let's say we pick, um, actually we don't have any gems around. We've got some glass. And we've got some stone, but that's it. 
Um, although it doesn't really matter, but you could pick a gem and then you could use the F hack to change the details of the job to be a generic gem cutting thing as opposed to cutting a specific gem. Apparently we're gonna have to mine out some more gems, so we'll see about that. Anyway, that's the stone knocker. So if you go down five levels, we now get to our metal crafters level here, which is shaped like a Smith's hammer. Very exciting. Uh, so this includes some furnaces over here. So we've got three furnaces. Uh, they're going through processing the lignite to generate iron. Uh, then they're gonna make pig iron bars. And then with the pig iron bars, they're gonna make steel bars. And so we're really trying to work the steel industry. You can see plenty of um, limonite. I think I said lignite again, but limonite. We got plenty of limonite parked over here, ready to be smelted down. Uh, this is our bars over here. These are coal are being stored over here, mostly charcoal. Well, entirely charcoal, actually, from burning wood. Uh, here we have our actual metal bars, which are then used by our metalsmith's forge over here to do a few things. And we're gonna be making some changes to this pretty soon. We got some interesting plans. Down here is a, um, a metal crafters guild hall that is currently being smoothed out. And what's great over here, there's actually some demonstrations currently happening. Um, oh, some socializing with diplomats and things like that. Okay, but some people might give um, give lessons and tutorials because the peasants, you know, there's a caste system, but the peasants can be brought into a caste and some of them might come here to attend some demonstrations and learn and then maybe they'll become a metal caster or crafter later on, we'll see. So if we go down another five levels, okay, first of all, this level here at 112, um, this is just, uh, this is all marble over here. And marble, in addition to being very pretty, is a flux stone and is one of the things that we use as part of our steel making industry. So mostly we were mining this out as a quarry for marble over here. And we'll probably continue to do that a fair bit. And then this whole area can turn into, I don't know, a giant like furniture stockpile or something like that. If we go down to level 110, we reach our life miners floor where we have a fantabulous uh, dining hall here. It looks a little bit funny just because of being in pause mode. If I unpause these things, these are designations for more tables and chairs and things like that. But this will be a dining hall. It's going to be smoothed out. Um, I dug out a little bit more over here because one of the things that I really, um, you know, figured out and, and, and stuff this week while playing my own personal fortress here is that you can combine like zones and things to do multiple things. So our dining hall here could also be designated as a tavern which is gonna be very nice. And a tavern wants a, uh, a dancing floor. And I think a dance floor has to be at least five by five. So I'm just expanding our dining hall just a little bit over here so that there'll be a dance floor available as well for a tavern. The advantage of the tavern is you can have uh, dwarves or even foreign visitors. Bards can come in and join your fortress um, and they will entertain patrons. So it should lead to lots of good thoughts, which is gonna be great. We could also combine this area with a, a, a temple, um, which will satisfy even more needs at once works very well, feels a little cheesy, I don't know. If we go up one level again though, this uh, area here, this is our museum floor and it looks down on our on our dining hall and tavern. Um, so we've got pedestals over here where we're gonna put various pieces of artwork and our um, artifacts mostly. And yeah, it looks down with tables and chairs. Can you not close the stairs down with the drawbridge? The enemy was take the ramp down. Yes, that's in fact going to be the plan, uh, uh, Zastrum. It's either a drawbridge or we can lock um, um, floor hatches and things like that. But yeah, I can. Um, I think I'm probably gonna put a little drawbridge on top of our staircase to force people down the hallway. Right now it's moot because the hallway doesn't actually have extra defenses, but we got big plans over there. Now this actually reminds me, I just realized I have multi-view turned on. And one of the things, we did run into a couple of crashes um, playing this in the past, and there seems to be two big things that tend to generate crashes. Um, one thing is uh, the multi-level view. I'm gonna turn that off so we can no longer see multi-levels. This is the normal behavior in Dwarf Fortress. You don't actually see down, you just see this empty space. The other thing that can cause problems is um, the text will be text plugin, which is a very good plugin um, for DF Hack. And it makes it so that, because normally, because of the way Dwarf Fortress is made with sort of ASCII graphics and things like this, it's quasi ASCII things. Um, some of the ASCII graphics, um, for various letters have been replaced with extra characters. Uh, it means when you're reading text in normal Dwarf Fortress, some of the letters will be weird symbols. So the text will be text add-on. Uh, that does require DF hack. Um, it prevents that problem so that things that are in text are actual text instead of using your tile map, which is really good. Uh, but by some of the uh, tile map settings have this redraw all turned on by default. And it does pre prevent certain graphic glitches, but it can lead to crashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Uh, and having those two off is good. Now I keep trying to add them to my config files to auto run. And it does, like if we go back, you'll see notes in here um, that it's gonna, it's turning off at least somewhere in there. It's turning off some of the redraw modes and multi-level, but then there's some other part of the config that re-enables them. So I just mostly usually have to go and make sure to turn, like reset them manually over here for some annoying reason. Um, 
But yeah, having those two off, I, as long as those two were off, I never experienced a crash all week. When they were on, I was experiencing, cra experiencing crashes. So that's gonna be good. Uh, the redraw being off means that every now and again, when we change maybe levels or, or move around a bit, every now and again, there'll be like a little artifact, like one of the one of the tiles won't have been redrawn like correctly, but then you just like move again and then everything is fine. So anyway, if you see any sort of weird visual glitches like that, that might be where it's from. Um, and honestly, with the multi-view on, it looks very pretty, but with this off, it's a lot clearer and easier to see what's going on in places. So we'll see. Can you please say what the hotkey is to set the automation, for example, jump cutting? Oh, um, okay. So, uh, and we got some whiskey and chocolate. I'll take a look at that in a second. So there is the O button uh, over here for set orders. Set orders is O. Uh, this is a very useful screen that changes a lot of standing orders for your dwarves and a lot of different settings. Uh, and in particular, the capital W over here, workshop orders, has a bunch of extra stuff. Now this is all built into Dwarf Fortress. Anything you see in red, like see these little red characters over here? These are things that were added by DF hack. So this auto cut gems. Uh, so it would default to off, with DF hack, if you hit G, you can turn auto cut gems on. But all these other settings are also things you can tweak. And these are built into Dwarf Fortress. Auto cut gems is not. Um, and so that's it. So it's O capital W and then lowercase G over here. Uh, but yeah, if you just go into O for your orders, you'll find tons of useful stuff. A really, really helpful menu. Uh, why did you reveal the map? Were you looking for something specific? Oh, yeah. Um... What was I doing here? I was checking something before the stream to make sure everything was working okay. I can't remember what. I can't remember what. It was just part of the prep work before the stream. Um, I was... Was it something with these upper layers over here? I, I don't remember. It wasn't, it wasn't a big thing. There was not, wasn't anything that was really spoiled. I was just making sure there was no, there wasn't a technical problem with something. I can't remember what it was. Um, was I testing the vision modes? I don't know. Sorry, not sure. Um, so that's that floor. There you go. Okay, dining hall. And then we have the museum up here. And the last thing I want to talk about in the museum is right over here. Actually, first I want to check, take a look at the whiskey and chocolate contributions. But we got to talk about this coffin over here, the one and only dwarf who has died so far in a fortress, Erica Hoff, an extremely brave dwarf that saved us from a were elk. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but first I want to check the whiskey and chocolate fun. Uh, we got, oh, it's Cool Man again. Hey, Cool Man Nacho, thank you so much. Um, actually, that's a great question. Do we have the, the inn uh, for visiting humans and dwarves? Uh, by inn, a, a tavern is, well, I guess, yeah, it's a tavern, but you can have bedrooms attached to it, which sort of makes it an inn. We don't have it yet. That is something we're going to definitely be talking about, especially as we're setting up a tavern in our dining hall. We're going to have to figure out exactly what kind of stuff we want to do for that setup over there. Uh, and then Cool Man also says, so we can keep the drunkard Cool Man happy. Oh, okay. You figure one of the visiting humans would be you. And then we can gain the deadly sock. Yeah, I really want to send an expedition to our old fort. Uh, the marmor is encrusted with gold, glass, and gems for legendary dwarf to dwarves. I don't know what a marmor is, but... Encrusting is pretty good. Okay, um, Erica Hoff. So I think it was last stream. We got attacked by a werewolf on a surface. Erica Hoff um, ran into it, fought it, killed it, but died herself. Or maybe she didn't kill it actually. No, no, we were trying to lock things up. She was out on the surface because she was a plant gatherer and drew, the were elk was pulled to her. But while the were elk was busy hunting her, we were able to get all our other dwarves to safety and, and seal it up until the were elk turned back into, I believe goblin form and then escaped the map. We then went out and recovered Erica's body. Now um, I pulled up, uh, I pulled up Erica in the legend mode over here. Uh, to, to just get a bit of an idea about her. Um, and a few things are very interesting. And I apologize for the blinding whiteness all of a sudden. Um, what's interesting is once, so Erica was bit in the battle and was technically infected with were elkism, although then died immediately afterwards, possibly as a result of the exact same bite that would have infected her. And what's interesting is it uh, changes the family tree that gets displayed in the legend viewer. Instead of showing the actual like parental ancestral tree, it switches it to show you the were creature ancestry. So Erica Hoff was bitten. Oh, it wasn't a goblin. It was a human were elk over here. Gobble smoke aces uh, who had bitten someone else as well. Um, <laughs> his last name's kind of funny. Nuts waxes. Anyway, um, so Erica was bitten by this human were elk. Now, if we go over and scroll over some more, and scroll over some more. Finally, we find out. So that human was bitten by this human, Ido Blushed Carry the Wild, who also bit 
this goblin, Stradno Malign Belch the Earthen. Stradno Malign Belch the Earthen was also responsible for biting many other dwarves, including many from our previous fortress. So this goblin were elk bit Net Stranger, for example, um, also bit uh, Jazeem, who then in turn bit many more dwarves in our fortress. This is the, the elk infestation, the were elk infestation that nearly destroyed the fortress, but then we defended it, we defeated all this. You can see here, Anonymous Noodle was also bitten and then turned around and bit many, 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 many other dwarves over here. Uh, Silent Hunter was bitten and infected five more el dwarves over there as well. Artifactual was bitten and infected many other dwarves in that fortress. But we ended up killing all these. We ended up dealing with all that stuff. Um, but even if we go back, if I go and zoom out, we can see that this were elk infestation, it started way over here. Um, a, uh, a human probably knocked over the statue of this goddess. I think it's a goddess. Oh, male of this god. Um, knocked over a statue and was uh, cursed to become a were elk and then went and bit many other things. And this is the reason we've actually got kind of a were elk problem in our world. There's a lot of were elks in our world, which is a little bit terrifying. Uh, this is the rest of the story of uh, Erica Hoff over here. Not a whole lot in her life, actually. In 254, she uh, joined our fortress. Uh, the Wire of Speakers might have been one of our, that might have been one of our starting dwarves. I'm not sure. Uh, settled in raised blockades. I'm not sure. Became a, gave up being a farmer, became a herbalist. Uh, and then right over here. Yeah. Um, she was bitten by the were elk, uh, but then died on the exact same day. So probably as part of that. So Erica, we're very, very, very sorry for your passing. On the other hand, the fact that you did keep the were elk busy for a little bit while you were out. The problem is she was out picking plants near the edge of the map when the were elk came onto the map. The were elk was basically on her right away, but it did give us enough time to get back in there. <laughs> get him drunk with some alcohol. Ah! So if we keep going down, 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 we eventually get to our hood whacker stage, the wood whackers. Uh, these are our carpenters, our tree cutters, uh, our wood burners, all sorts of things like that. And they have kind of a, it's supposed to look like kind of a tree root or maybe a trunk with branches uh, that come out. And then all these little pieces of uh, forestry canopy over here, just to try to do a different look. Um, it's one of our newer floors that hasn't been smoothed or anything yet. Um, but we've got the start of the of our wood industry. So we got our wood furnaces over here, uh, Crafts Dwarf Workshop. This is going to be for wooden bolts. I think that might be the only thing um, uh, we got an ash tree here, so we can turn the wood into ash and lye. No, I guess the wood furnace turns into ash. The ash tree can turn it into lye and maybe potash or something like that. Yeah, lye and potash. Yep. Uh, and then we've got some carpenters workshops over here that we'll do something with. Oh, and another craft dwarf workshop. I didn't realize I had two craft dwarf workshops. I might, I might change the look of this over here. Uh, and then various storage stockpiles. If we continue to go down to level 100, level 100 hasn't been built up yet, but this will be the level for our flesh renders. These are our um, hunters, butchers, uh, now, hunters and butchers really would prefer to be nearer to the surface. On the other hand, they can also hunt down in the caverns, which might be very, very useful for us. Uh, but also, this is where we're going to have our animal pens, animal trainers, um, leather workers, tanners, all that kind of stuff. And maybe more useful near the surface, but, you know, this, it was a lower priority area, so they ended up just being lower down into the fort. And if we go down another five levels to level 95... This is where we breached the very first cavern over here, right at the end of the last episode. Um, so again, we were doing every five levels, we were doing something. Uh, we came down here, we're doing an exploratory tunnel, because I'd said what I wanted to do was, um, uh, I want to set up the farmers on in the caverns where water was. Uh, and I was just hoping. So I went down to floor 95, I was gonna do an exploratory tunnel. If we didn't find a cavern, I was gonna go down another five levels, do another exploratory tunnels, and so on and so forth. Well, we hit it here. Um, and I'm happy we have water, but it turns out we have all water. This, as far as we can tell so far, this entire cavern level is utterly flooded. No flat ground for us to work in. I don't think I've ever seen that before. So yeah, we just, just, just hit this area. Uh, and what I did here right before the stream started, I, I put in a little uh, order to, for, to construct, construct a wall. Actually, I'm gonna construct a wall using the very boulder that's sitting in this tile over here. Um, so it should go up fairly quickly. So what we're probably going to do is carve out, maybe this area over here, what we can maybe do is just carve out this area over here and then build a screw pump and just flood this flat area with water so it gets muddy. And then we can farm over here. And I think that might be quite lovely. 
Um, and then the only level that hasn't been assigned yet, uh, our final cast, are the fort builders, um, who could be deep down. The other thing I was thinking, because there's not going to be a lot of fort builders, they might actually just be happy to live between, say, the stone and metal floors, uh, because they might have to use some resources from both. We will see. Uh, what's the best power you can have in Dwarf Fortress Vampire? Vampire is a lot more controllable because it's not phasing in and out, right? Um, and people have made Vampire Forts, which is quite cool. Anyway, I think I can go ahead and unpause now. I know we've got like half an hour of build up. Well, I was reading various things and talking about various things, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, but we'll see. Quite kind of damp in there. Yeah, it's a little bit damp. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unpause. Yeah, well, the apartment complex idea is interesting. Unpause. There's no, no news, right? Oh, Caravan had just arrived. No, literally just arrived now because my screen just moved. I was just, I, I was hitting A to open the um, the alerts. <laughs> I didn't realize it was the exact same time the caravan arrived. Um, so we should have some trade here. Where, uh, where, did, where did they come in? Okay. Annoying little pop-ups. We're also going to talk about, um, where are they? Oh, there they are. Sword Dwarf. So if I go uh, what, V, F, and then pause. Are they not moving? Oh, there they come. There they come. You can see the little wagons. Excellent. So they're going to set up some trade and we're going to sell them some mugs. So they're going to come through here. They're going to go down the ramps, down, 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 down to the great entrance hall over here. And currently I only have one stockpile somewhere. I think it's this one over here. I should rename it. Yeah. So I'm going to rename this stockpile. You can name them. Huh? Yeah. Control N. Uh, mugs for sale. It's the only stockpile in the entire fortress that accepts our goblets. And I did use the DF hack, hack little tag to set auto trade, so I don't even have to select it in the trade menu um, to be lazy. Hey, Meow Zedong! <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Long time viewer, you're a Java programmer trying to get into Unity in your project. Porkpine, RimWorld S game from like six years ago, yeah, uh, have been helping me a lot, so thanks for that. Thank you very much, Meow Zedong. Also, excellent name. Really, truly wonderful. So, um, I guess it is it is the fall, so we've got ourselves a, uh, a Dwarven Caravan here. So it's Ral Ralkidit. I'm your liaison from the Mountain Holds. Let's discuss your situation. So it's a Pikmin Mega Master, who is our... Um, are they their Expedition ma Manager or our Broker? Who talks to them? Uh, there's much to share yet. we got some info. Hold on. Yeah, okay, it's our Mayor. It's our Mayor slash Leader. Ooh! We gotta set some. Uh, we gotta get some bedrooms going on for a mayor and her captain of the guard here. Okay. What requests do you have, the merchants? Well, I think we're gonna ask for leather. It's always good to ask for some more. I'm always a big fan of asking for cloth. We'll, we'll make that a bit of a higher priority. Maybe a little bit of silk cloth as well. Um, I don't know about anything else. We could make requests for specific bars of metal. Uh, I don't know if that's really a big deal. We don't need gems. Um, we should probably get more seeds. Actually, I'm going to make that a very high priority. Maybe maxed out priority for the next year. We're going to try to buy a bunch of seeds and make sure that's going to be working okay. Uh, we shouldn't have to ask for anvils because we do have access to iron. So we can make our own anvils. It's going to be okay. I don't usually ask for weapons or an ammo or anything like that. They tend to bring some, but it's not really a big deal. Um, you could ask for some animals. We actually do have animals to like start everything up. We've got, um, we've got breeding sets for pigs, dogs and geese, which we have to get going. May as well ask for booze. We don't have to make it a very high priority, maybe middle of the way. It'll just save us from making a little bit. Um, I'll ask for a little bit of cheese as well. Um, we're gonna want some gypsum platter, plaster in case we need to make casts. What do we need quicklime for? Is that just, that's just fertilizer, right? Which I don't think we care about. Will bars make fancy statues for nobles? Maybe, that's kind of why I want to make um, like a, maybe a glass industry. I might ask for sand so we can make some glass cheaply or just ask for a little bit of glass so that if anyone gets in a strange mood, it's around. It's not a bad idea, yeah. I don't think we have to ask for extracts. You can ask for milk and make your own cheese a little bit cheaper, but I don't know. Um, they'll And they'll bring some of this all the time, like a little bit of meat and fish we might do. Um, I'll ask for some more plump helmets because that'll be another way to maybe get some seeds out of it. Um, Cages, animals, bags, I don't know. It's probably worth asking for some thread. Sometimes it can be kind of annoying to do that, to have enough. And yeah, let's ask for a little bit of various types of sand and a low priority on glass. All of these, buckets, splints, eggs, bags, yarn cloth. Um, just, I guess some of the strange moods explicitly ask for yarn type cloth, don't they? So we'll put in a request for that. This is all for next year. Ne yeah, literally next year. Oh, soap. Is soap in the list? 
We do have to start making soap, although we can, because we should have tallow, and once we get Ashri going, we can start our soap industry. I don't know what category soap is under. Is this considered a glob? I don't know if that's not, you can't import soap, okay. But we're gonna ask for some stuff that we can make it out of, and we should be okay. Well then, we have finished the import agreement. Feel free to look over the document. So uh, this is what we're going to be importing, so at a slightly premium price. It's the thing, you, when you request something, um, it increases the chance that there's going to be a bunch of that uh, when they come next year, but it will be at a higher price. Let's discuss what we're willing to offer you for a craft dwarf ship. Well, I mean, I'm only going to be offering you mugs, like goblets, so I hope you're okay with that. Wow, 200% for figurines, rock bracelets, thread, windows, metal bars, sheets. I mean, if we had some fish, we could definitely sell them fish for some extra money. But figurines and bracelets, I believe, would be fall under generic rock crafts, which we don't do because we just make mugs instead. Um, we'll see if we got any fish. I don't. We're not fishing though. Farewell, Pikmin Mega Master. Uh, I look forward to our meeting next year. Our fortunes rise and fall together. All right. Just out of curiosity, if I go um, move goods over here, fish. Well, I got a couple of fish barrels. Here, let's do, I mean, we want the food, but we can we can turn a little bit of a profit selling these fish this year. That's gonna be okay. Um, the other thing I do like to do um, is you can sell uh, old clothing, which annoyingly would fall under. So what we do is we throw all the body wear, oops, body wear, head wear, hand wear, foot wear, leg wear. And you gotta check because sometimes there's bins that have one, but not another. So you do have to check all these categories. We'll do that and we'll see if there's any old clothes we can sell them. The other thing we will do at some point is we'll probably issue a fortress wide decree to have all the dwarves uh, strip off, cast off their worn clothing. Um, so we can uh, get them into some new clothing at some point. Dwarves do like to wear clothes until they're absolutely threadbare. Um, so there's a DF hack command you can use to force them to, to to th cast off their very worn clothing and force them to start getting new thoughts. Oh, someone just gave birth! A uh, video game history just gave birth! Oh, congratulations, video game history. Nature's dwarves. Well, the idea is hopefully we'll have new clothes to replace that with. Um, as I don't know, the Lords and Villains series isn't over. Uh, it's just being delayed. I and mean, the holidays and everything like that have kept things very busy. So we'll, we'll definitely, I'll be looking to do a couple more. And I don't think it's gonna be a very long series. You know, five or six episodes, but I think we're at four right now, and I'd like to do another one or two. We did have someone fall into a strange mood at the end of the last episode. We did, and I remember that was one of the things I was going to do. Oh, they claimed um, they claimed a craft dwarf's workshop right over here. Plowin has claimed a craft dwarf workshop right over here. Um, I don't know where they are. They must be they must be grabbing some stuff. Zoom. Strange mood follow yeah they're they're walking around so they're they're looking for something oh they've got a rock they're hauling a rock very very slowly now luckily so when they're in a strange mood if they if they're in a strange mood too long without being able to complete their task they can go berserk but that only counts the time they're sitting in the workshop um if they're actively hauling stuff they won't go berserk uh, that doesn't count as part of the timer although it does contribute to them getting thirsty and hungry so it sucks that the rocks are taking so freaking long to haul there but Let's see. Um, Peja, I don't know if you're a dwarf. Nope, you're not currently a dwarf. Oh, also, um, I don't know if... Um, uh, what's your name? Uh, Detroxification. I don't know if you're in chat, but I will be making you a military dwarf uh, very, very soon. Uh, Detrox had had a request for that last week, uh, but currently he's too valuable as, who's a, as a miner in the mason. Uh, but we will be moving you to the military fairly soon. Okay, there you go. Plown just dropped off a rock and is going back for something else. Maybe it's going to be another rock. I don't know what he's got so far. He's got two chunks of marble that he's going to use so far. Ooh, that's quite nice. And he's going back for something else. I don't know what. We got a bunch of bolts and stuff sitting over here. Clearly, we don't have enough ammo storage, but that's okay. Some migrants have arrived. Okay. Now... I really, 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 really want to get going with our um, quarantine setup here. I can't really, because we don't have a gate to seal in the bottom of the fort yet. We're going to have to risk this one more uh, migrant wave. But before we go any further, right over here, I am going to ask for a bridge to be constructed. 
right over in back here. And this is what we're going to use to seal off our inner fortress uh, completely. So I'm going to set up a bridge that's going to retract to the right right over here, and it's going to be used to seal off our inner fortress and give us a quarantine zone outside. And we're going to force the migrants to stay outside for a, um, a full moon cycle to establish that there are no were beasts over there. I'm going to set up a bridge over there. You can be made with not metal bars. I guess use some diorite over here. I mean, blocks would be more efficient and quicker to drag, but at least we know it's close. Um, and I don't know how much block construction we've got going on. Actually, we could take a quick little check at our stocks here. What is our block situation? We've got tons of blocks. Let's use that. Because one rock chunk gets cut into four blocks. Uh, and blocks are also a lot lighter to carry. So it's a lot nicer and, and tend to be more valuable. So it's a lot nicer to build things. I guess I don't need to do three by three. Um, a lot nicer to build things out of this than anything else. You know what? I will leave a gap between the door just to say. Okay, so that's back in position. Um, I don't think we can search this window. Not even with the F hack, which is a little bit weird. Wait, do we not have any... Why are the blocks not showing up in here? Bars, 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 And logs. We're not going to make this out of logs, though. <laughs> Where dwarves must prevent proof of Werebeast vaccination to enter. Quarantine after travel is too real world for me. I mean, there's that. Yeah, we're going to have to have a wear, wear creature social distancing. Where are my blocks? Stocks. Blocks. I have like a gross. This is a dozen dozen. Is that a gross? I don't know. 144 phyllite blocks, theoretically, in the fortress. I don't know. All right, I'll just make it out of diorite. Oops. I knew I was going to forget, like, the retract direction the, like, 15th time I was going to go to build this. I'll still go with diorite, because it'll be heavy, but at least it's fairly close. All right. So, okay, um, what... So, it is the 22nd of limestone, so, which is July. Um... Or not? Oh, well, that's interesting. It looks like it's the seventh month. But it's early autumn. So it's September? I'm confused. Because according to the wiki calendar, limestone is September. And it's certainly early autumn, that makes sense. But right over here, this looks to me like we're in the seventh month. Which would be July. Oh, hold on. No, the calendar starts in March. Oh, they use the old school calendar where September is the seventh month. October is the eighth. November is the ninth. December is the 10th. Ah, anyway, the full moon in September is on the 13th. So we've already passed that one. The next one would be in October in sandstone on the 10th. So really until the 10th of, of, of the next month of October, the eighth month, uh, we won't know if any of these are were creatures. Unfortunately, we can't seal in our fortress yet. Not until that bridge is up and we have it linked to a lever. Uh, well, I can seal it in here, but it would seal in the merchants, which might be a little bit weird. I don't know how long the merchants stay. If they stay for a full month, which might be the case, it might be okay. I don't know how they react if they're locked in and can't leave. Oh, your mind is won't? Yeah, yeah. Because there's always a bunch of people are like, why is like, you know, October, November, December, why are they named like that when they're like the, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th months? Doesn't make any sense. Well, at some point, there are Romans. And ils sont fous des les Romains. Should I just close the gate? Although we've got some dwarves outside too, though. I'm just going to risk it this one. I'm not going to close the gate. Oops, no, I don't want to remove you. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're actually gonna get to the point where we've got this extra gate here, the one I just built right over here. We're probably gonna keep the dwarves more or less perma sealed downstairs or something like that. I don't know what it's gonna be. Yeah, Belling, Julius, and Augustus, exactly. So, what we're gonna do now that the migrants have entered the map, our Autonaki is set to run once a day anyway, but just to make sure we'll do that. And I'll just use a, DF, or a Dwarf Therapist over here to easily see where a Migrant Wave is. 
So we got nine new migrants. Although again, I have um, I have dwarf therapist set here to filter out children. Uh, also, I do not have it set to show like cursed creatures right now. So if any of these are were creatures, we won't know unless they've been branded. Because we did brand a few of our dwarves that we knew were were creatures uh, early on. I think they were were pandas actually with a W at the start of their name, which would still be there um, unless they assumed an identity. So we got Conrad the Bavarian, Dan Barta, Gary the Cormorant, who's definitely here today, Hasten Pop. Pops Cockles, Shuddy, SMZ35G, Swamp Slug, and Targnar are here. They are all going to be told that they are, that they're all coming in as peasants currently. Although some of them do have some interesting stuff. We've got someone else with Bowery. We don't care about Bowery. Literally, we have this one dwarf we sort of shun. Monty Max over here, although he is a broker, most of because we're not going to trust him to do um, other jobs right now. He got in a strange mood early on and built a artifact bow. Not a crossbow a bow. So he has been shunned. Despite the fact that he has a 20 skill in bowery, we don't let him do any work like that. That's crazy. In fact, I propose maybe we sell the bow to the merchants here for money. Just get it out of the fortress. Although, ooh, no, we should not sell it to the dwarves. It would be too embarrassing. We can sell it to some humans or something like that. That'll be okay. Yeah, but he's an elf. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else got something extraordinary? Well, Targnar is uh, got a 13 in woodcrafting, but again, something we don't particularly care about too much. Uh, animal training and trapping, nothing fantastic. Milker, yeah, uh, it, uh, fairly present level skills. I mean, Targnar is admittedly a pretty good woodcrafter uh, and would make some very good wooden bolts, um, which with crossbow combat, uh, it is the quality of the bolts that determines the damage. Uh, the quality of the crossbow itself, I think, only comes to play if they're meleeing with it. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, lock these in. Uh, and what will probably happen is more of these will get recruited into the military, uh, which we're going to be taking a look at fairly soon here. Let's go ahead and unpause some more. Hold the bolt, tell the elves you can't have that and laugh at them. Well, here's the thing. We're not going to get any elven visitors whatsoever because um, there are no elven civilizations on our continent. And in fact, the only elven civilizations that exist, which is on a distant island, uh, one has one elf and one has four elves and that's it that's the entirety of civilization there are more elves alive in various places a lot of them are slaves of the goblin empire for example but yeah um oh the other thing i want to do uh oh no 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 we're good okay so i'm gonna ask that monty max come here to trade and we'll set that up that's six elves too many <laughs> but yeah the the elves have been banished from our entire continent we couldn't do anything about the ones on the other island because, you know, it's across the water and dwarves don't don't like to swim. We decorate each pillar with a different material for each clan. Now, that's a cool idea. Um, we could also make custom statues because when you ask for a statue to be made. Oh, hold on. Particularly secretive. <gasps> Plowin needs. OK, he, he's, he still has needs. He doesn't have everything he's looking for. He needs gems. He's particularly secretive, so he's not going to be very clear about what he's sending. We got some bits in. Hey, Dark, thank you very much. Um, so the quarry is just means he wants stone, which he's collected plenty of, and certainly we have stone around, so that's not a problem. But he also has pictures of rough gems. He wants some uncut gems, and we know we don't have any of that because we actually just looked at our gem situation um, earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and take a look here to see. I think there's a few places where we hit some gems. I don't really want to pop those into the walls, but if we have to, we will. Um... Just in case we hit, there's some gems here, yeah? Yeah, some pyrite clusters. I think pirates type of gem. We can go ahead and just mine that out. That's going to be okay. Uh, this blue stone is probably cobaltite. Yeah, which are not gems. Uh, we do have a few gems in the walls here. Actually, there's some right over here. We've got some crystal barrel. Here, we'll go and uh, cut those out. And then we can always do some more exploratory mining. Actually, uh, on our sort of metal quarry floor over here... Click on that. Oh, that's more limonite. That's cobaltite. I guess we don't see any gems in here either. What about on floor um, 112, our big marble floor? Nope, nothing. I mean, I could just run some random uh, tunnels in places to find some more. But we are gonna we're gonna pop a few gems over here, so we should we're, we're gonna be fine for that strange mood. We're gonna be a okay. IKEA level, that big open one. Yeah, we'll just make it a big furniture stockpile. It'll be the IKEA level. I like that. When you mine, what do you usually find next to the basalt? The bay pepper, or basalt and bop pepper, if you prefer it that way. 
Uh, can you order your military to preemptively kill a dwarf in the mood? If you know you don't have the material needed for construction. I don't think you can turn your military against a friendly dwarf. Don't think so. Um, I think it's a problem with, like, when we have known weird creatures, when they're back in dwarf form, I don't think we can slaughter them in dwarf form. Um, not, not with the military. There are other ways, of course. Above freezing! Thank you very much for the bits! Thanks for your great videos, long time lurker. Thank you very much, Above Freezing. I wish it were above freezing here. It's like minus 20 today. I think it feels like minus 32 or something with it. Oh, hold on. Oh, Makey! Gave birth to a girl! Oh, Makey. Congratulations. All right, let's take a look at the trade situation over here. So, first thing I'm going to do is over on the right, I'm just going to filter for mugs. I'm just going to mark all the mugs for trade. Excellent. The other thing I'm going to do, um, there is, oh, I can't remember the sort for quality. It's like control shift. Bound. Oh no, it's something else. Uh, I guess there's no shortcut. But in theory, I can say sort items. Uh, order where? Oh, you just type the order. Duh. Uh, sort dash items where? So in theory, things were sorted by how worn they are. Although I guess they're still filtered for other things, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but anyway, we have some we have some like rotten clothes down here that we're just gonna sell. Some just some old clothing that's a little bit worn that none of our dwarves are wearing. Um, and oh, these fish. Well, these fish barrels aren't worth very much. Are there any fish in them? Maybe that's the problem. Now some of these finished good barrels had some other things in them as well. A little bit of clothing and ropes. I don't know if we want to sell those though. Although maybe, some of these we don't particularly care about. Did we, like, how do we end up with copper and bronze armor? Did we buy them on previous things? We'll keep them around in case we need them right now. I don't think we're in a real hurry to sell them. We'll sell some mugs and some worn out clothes and that's gonna have to be uh, good enough for now. Uh, it's 4,000 dwarf bucks worth of stuff. Yeah, I bought some from the humans, that might've been it. And right now they're not being worn, but I, I think I wanted some spare armor, even though like we want to, we really want to um, um, standardize on steel armor. But I think we bought those as just sort of placeholders in case we needed some things. Now, we got various bars of metal we could buy here. I don't think that's really going to be our priority. Um, I could just buy uh, raw crystal glass, like raw glass, because you can cut raw glass. Because at your glass kiln, kiln? Maybe it's a kiln? Anyway, at, at the place where you make glass, you can make, you can take sand and you make glass out of it. If you make raw glass, all you do with raw glass is cut into crystals, like gems. Um, if you make, if, if you wanna make glass furniture or anything like that, you just make that directly. Um, so I think this raw glass here would count as a gem for the purpose of our artifact, but we're not, look, glass furnace, that's what it is, because it's only for pottery. Just yeah, call it glass furnace. And chocolate. Um, clay we definitely have access to. But yeah, we might buy some sand. Sometimes you buy some ropes and various things like that. I don't think we're gonna, <laughs> I'm a werewolf. You know the difference between werewolves and werewolves? Werewolves don't exist! Wait a minute. Well, I suppose in Dwarf Fortress, I don't think I've ever run into an actual werewolf in Dwarf Fortress. One day, one day it'll happen. Flasks, instruments, toys, cages, including things in a cage like a hen. I mean, we could buy them if, if it was something, like we can buy a rooster and a hen, but we've got geese, so we're really looking for that. I don't think we're looking to buy some critters. Um, milk, rum, Here, we'll buy a little bit of rum. Uh, cool man should be happy about that. He's a big fan of rum. A little more over here. Steel picks. Wow, that's way too expensive if we're not buying that. Training weapons. We could buy like some extra random picks here just to help with our mining, but we can craft our own. It's really not a big deal. So I'm not gonna prioritize that. We could buy some weapons. We could buy more armor, but I don't think we're looking to do that because theoretically our steel industry is going now. Random clothing which might be good to buy, but okay, here we're gonna get down here. Hold on, we missed a few things. Well, I'll do a search for the plump helmet spawn and things like that, so I don't need to grab that quite yet. Same thing with the seeds. I'll grab sand. I don't think we need a quick lime. Rock nuts, sure. Sand. Uh, 
a little more sand. In case we do want to make our own glass. Because the sand... Oh, sandbag's not... I wonder why this one's so much more expensive. This red sandbag is 31. This one's 121. I don't think it's the value of the sand. I think the amounts are, should be the same. It must be the value of the bag. I guess this one's made out of silk. That sort of makes some sense. Yeah, so red sandbag over here out of silk bag is expensive. Um, rock nut seeds. Cave wheat seed. We might grow some cave wheat. Get some food variety. So we'll buy a little bit of that. Um, again, I'll do a filter for seeds soon anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Well, this is a spider silk bag and it's not very expensive. So I don't really know. Make a library in. Well, um, we're, we're going to make a, a tavern. Whether or not we open it for visitors, we'll see. The library, same thing. I'm not entirely sure yet. Okay, let's come down here. Because we're going to want some leather. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for leather bins. And we're going to buy several of the cheap leather bins here. Okay. Um, I'm also going to look for cloth bins. Oops. Um, and they're quite a bit more expensive, but I'll buy at least one. Okay, let's filter on seeds. And we'll buy... I definitely want the pigtail. I guess all the seed bags are fairly cheap. We might as well grab them. Um, and then we want a plump helmet. So the spawns are the seeds for that. And then we can buy some of the actual plump helmets as well. Although, okay, we might have to stop here. Is there anything I'm tragically missing? Lie. Uh, we've got um, gypsum plaster. I'll buy a little bit of that in case we need it. We know we can't get soap. Because they're currently sitting on 800 dwarf bucks worth of profit. We probably can't add much more and still have them be happy. Yeah, no, we don't have that many mugs to offer right now. I think this is going to have to be it currently. Let's see if they take this. Let's offer this in trade. I should be careful when you say offer for trade, because there is an offer button, which is to give it to them for free. I'll try to trade this. If they are willing to do it. They're pleased. So they're not ecstatic. They're not whatever. So they didn't consider this to be like a wonderful, super strong deal in their fate. So we didn't get like, we didn't get um, shorted or anything. Although the dwarves were actually fairly happy to give them more. Um, because first of all, the more you give them, the happier they are, the more stuff they tend to bring with them. Uh, and specifically with the dwarves, uh, the more profitable the caravan is, the more migrants you get. Which sometimes can be good or bad. Who's single man? You want a mug with gems? Well, we'll see about that. I do think we're going to do some encrusting of mugs with gems at some point. So hopefully those gems get mined out soon. So that Powin, is that your name? Yeah, Plowin. There's an L in there. So that Plowin can uh, start on his artifact. We do have a few more mining jobs put in. Let's uh, let's take a quick look. Oh, right, bedrooms. One of the things I want to talk about with the bedrooms is um, uh, doing big apartment blocks is quite common in Dwarf Fortress, and there's pros and cons to doing that. Um, certainly, it's a lot easier and faster to make. Um, but I think because we do have our dwarves assigned to a very specific cast like this, I think we are going to plan bedrooms that we were going to explicitly assign two dwarves belong in that particular cast. It will keep them closer to their work areas, which is really nice. Um, although they will still have to go to the Great Hall for food. Um, so there's still gonna be a little bit of that. But like, so this is the Stone Knockers area. If we go down one level, like I might build their bedrooms over here. So I think that's what's going to happen. Um, now, speaking of as well, I was talking about the inn. Wow, there's not a lot of mining going on. Hold on, what are the Stone Knockers doing? Rock tables, chairs, they're doing a little bit of smoothing. One's in the strange mood and we are making some rock mugs as well. So literally none of our rock uh, um, rock knockers are currently mining. They're doing important stuff, but it does lead to an interesting question. Do we want to make it so that one's always on mining? I mean, sometimes we won't have any mining to do, but that'll, you know, but so they can take a break, that's okay. Do we want to make more rock knockers or stone knockers? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we do have more stone knockers than anything else. Although, of course, that makes tons of sense. All right, we're currently at eight. And yeah, Plowin is, is a currently out of commission right now. He will become a legendary stone crafter, unless he was possessed. He might be possessed, so he won't get the skill. I'm not sure. I think we do need some more. So if we look at our peasants over here, none of them have any mining skill. 
or um, the one has a little bit of masonry. Oh, I want to sort by masonry here. Um, Satani over here has a little bit of masonry skill, as well as some medical skills. We actually, honestly, I think the plan with Satani might be to save her as a um, as a life minder because it's a little harder to train up the medical skill. Uh, whereas you know anyone can kind of pick up uh, a mace. Pop Sockles, who just joined us, if we sort by mining here, this is a, a little bit cheaty, but if we took a look at Pop Sockles, uh, search Pop Sockles, and viewed the unit over here, uh, if we take a look at her traits, she's it, she's mighty and incredibly tough and agile, but mighty. Being strong will help her mine. Now, you also get stronger by mining, but this is probably a good pick for us to, huh, a good pick. You get it? It's a good pick. Uh, good kinesthetic sense as well, which I believe is related to the ability to uh, make pretty like masterwork stuff as well. Uh, so this might be an excellent pick. What are our interests? Um, where do you see that? Oh yeah, right over here. She likes gold, pig iron, emerald, rubber, wood, rubber, wood, wood, great horn. I mean, you do like some metals. I think Pop Sockles, now Pop Sockles hasn't been around very long. Should we prioritize based on when people have arrived? Because it feels like a little bit rude. You know, you've been in this fort for years now, for example, and you keep not being promoted. What do people think? Do we promote on, on merit? Well, at this point, it's not merit. She doesn't have any skill, right? We're just looking at her physically. And you're like, oh, you got some muscles. Been eating your spinach. Should be merit-based. And I think that is really the theme we've been going with our cast system so far. Pop Sockles, congratulations. You are going to be made into a stone knocker. And I think what's going to happen with you, actually, is I think we're going to turn off all your labors, except for mining for now. So I'm going to clear all labors. I'm going to assign mining. I'm going to take mining off of a few of these others, just in case they've got picks. We're going to have them drop. And we're going to do this. So Pop Sockles is only being assigned to mining. And it will make sure that she develops that skill quite quickly. So if we uh, follow Pop over here, she's currently making a rock mug. She had that labor enabled for a second and started the job. But if we follow her, so she'll make a mug here in the Craft Dwarf Workshop, and then she will reevaluate her jobs, and she should just do mining as soon as she's done this mug. Oh, did I do masonry instead of mining for Pops? You're right. I did do masonry instead. My bad. Pop Sockles, mining on, do this. Turn off these miners over here. Oh, I can't turn off, I uh, can't do anything with Plowman's jobs. That's interesting. We'll turn off Ghost Boy, because Ghost Boy is one of our gem carvers, although he doesn't have much to do. I'll keep the masonry on off, maybe, you know what? I don't know, we'll throw those back on. That's gonna be okay. So Pop Sockles is now only doing mining correctly, which is what I wanted. The fact that she was doing uh, the mug is still just a side effect of like the clicking. She never, she didn't, we didn't leave that on. Where did you go in here? Moved a little. Pop Sockles over here should just be a miner. So if we go back over to Dwarf Thor Fortress and watch, picking up equipment and now going to dig. Lovely. We got some gift subs I keep hearing in the background. Sorry, I'm not responding to those properly. Um, oh, it's Darkin. Darkin who gave the bits and then the gift subs as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Sin, Sin, Sinilipas, Sinilips. Uh, also give some gift subs a little bit earlier as well. Thank you very much. It was very kind. I know I'm missing things, but I'm terrible at my job. Oh, and Edo's creation just now as well. Thank you, Edo's. Oh, I didn't mean to, uh, I didn't mean to stop falling. Hold on, there's some combat. Green Tree Frogman. Who are you fighting? Full Force of the Impact. Did you fall out of a tree? I bet you all these green tree frog people were living in a tree that we cut down. Because none of my dwarves have gotten in any combat since Erica Hoff fought the uh, the were elk last episode. I bet you they were all in a tree that just got cut down. I just realized, is it possible that auto chop is on? First of all, let's turn that off. Sometimes it has a tendency to like designate way too many things. We'll just designate trees to be chopped by itself. Oh man, I gotta start with this and I gotta set up the end. So. Oh, that's right. I didn't want to set up the tavern down here until that got dug out. So, okay, now that it's there, let's figure out our, our, our setup over here on the surface. Because I really do want to get the outer wall. That's going to be part of our, our plans as well. They're telling us the frogmen and the ULs. <laughs> not for very long, they're not. <laughs> 
Okay, so what I want to do is I want to build a wall, and we're going to have seven towers. Um, and the towers, what I'm thinking of, they're going to be they're going to be three tiles tall. Uh, so the bottom two are mostly going to be just kind of wall stuff. Um, because okay, what I want to do, let me back up here a sec. I want to have a bridge. This this the central sort of tower over here, the entrance tower and things, which we might change the look of. We we had to make some of it very quick. We even used some wood for it, so this might get redesigned a little bit. Uh, we'll see. But one floor up, since we're not really going to need the defenses here the same way. Well, actually, maybe we'll leave this defenses. Maybe one floor above this, so this connection to the barracks for our iron bolt squad. I think that's what they're called, right? Yeah, the iron the iron bows. Um, we're gonna have a bridge that leads out to the wall so they can very easily patrol the outer wall. So um, I guess the height doesn't matter as much because the bridge could be quite high and then go down to the main wall. Because the, there's no reason the bridge has to be, or the outer wall has to be very high. I want the bottom level to be just a wall proper. And then the upper level, I want it to be a walkable perimeter so that we can have a patrol going around on the outside of the wall, um, but also have these seven towers. And the way the seven towers are gonna work is I think they're actually gonna go down to the ground a few levels so you can access the towers from down here and other than the bridge which can come much later the bridge from the central tower um so if there's no bridge from the central tower the only way to access the walls will be from underground and i think that's going to look awesome um really really cool so what i'm going to do is i guess i'm going to go into build mode construct i'm going to wall for a second so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn on the global setting for the planning mode over here so that it'll pick material automatically. And I have it set, it'll only use blocks for this. So that way we don't have to pick materials and it'll be quite cool. Um, so there's gonna be seven towers. I think what I'm thinking is I'm gonna have a tower here, 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 and then something like a pair of towers. Oh, the scrolling took a little longer than I thought. A pair of towers sort of here and here, and here and here. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that looks nice. We got some whiskey and chocolate. Who dat? Hey, no one. Thank you. Happy Dwarf Day. Had to cut down a tree ASAP the other day. Fisher Dwarf went into a strange mood. He was in a tree and couldn't get down. Lost all the frames because every tick he tried to path to a workshop. It was very slow. Ooh, damn. Uh, so thank you very much, no one. And yeah, that. So that's a problem for a few ways. When someone gets stuck and like gets stuck pathfinding, we had a problem uh, last episode with uh, a buzzard getting stuck in our butchery room and couldn't get out and our frame rate just dropped and we couldn't figure out why until we ended up killing the buzzard and everything went shot up again. So we have a war on buzzards right now. Um, but the other problem with like cutting people out of trees is when they fall, sometimes they can get hurt or die like the frogman. You think if anyone could survive a fall from a tree, it'd be a frogman, but I don't know. Will the towers have the entrance or is that a wall thing? I think the towers will have the entrance, although it's possible that two of our towers could flank the entrance. Now that's that kind of feels pretty good. So let's say let's say we plan the entrance over here. Now I might end up tearing this whole building down or moving it in some way because it's conceptually going to be a bit in the way because it would be kind of nice maybe if like the front gate just came straight down like this. This is all flat and level. We could build a road here and everything. It would look really nice. So I kind of do like the idea of maybe the entrance being over here, right? Um, so. Uh, use at least three tiles wide because it's what you need for wagons to go through. You know, some distance kind of like that. Um, we could leave maybe an extra actual wall. So these three tile walls in the middle are going to be removed. I was just using it as a little bit of a, an eyeball spot over here. Uh, but that's going to be a bridge right over here. And then, yeah, I guess what we could do is plan a tower. So let me go. Um, I'm going to start recording a macro. So I'm in wall mode right now. And I'm in the center. So I'm going to record a macro. Oh, hang on. Am I not in box select? Oh, I'm not in box select mode. Which might be fine. Let me restart the macro. Yeah. Thought I was in box select mode, but that's okay. Start in the middle. Click, 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 click. Go back in the middle. Mock out of the wall mode. Then build an up down stair. It's whiskey and chocolate! Um, and then I won't build the extra levels yet. And then escape, go back into wall mode, stop recording the macro. And I'm going to come here and build that. And then we're going to build... So, one, two, three, four, five... Well, that's not really going to be set. Hold on. There. Ten and ten? Sure. Play. Go whiskey and chocolate. Hold on. I'm keeping counts in my head. Play. So those are going to be the four towers to the south. 
and then yeah, straight up from this one and aligned over there. We'll hit play. Well, that'll be awfully straight. Uh, I don't know. That's probably all right. Play. And then we need this. We need to make sure it's centered up so that we have symmetry. Something like this. All right. That I think is all right. One whiskey and chocolate. Who's that? Oh, cool man! Hey, have you ever heard about crabs? Crab tail salad. Wait, crabs don't have tails. I'm confused. What? Uh, also, is I a dwarf? No, cool man. I don't think you're a dwarf yet. Need the plum tree logs for plum log barrels for plum beer and plum wine. Oh, that's right. We were talking about plum wine last time. Thanks for the reminder, cool man. How tall will the power tower be in the floors? And strange moons raised. So, the, the center tower? I don't know which one you mean necessarily. Right now, it's three stories tall. We might end up going taller. I think if before we do that, we might end up redesigning the central tower completely for a cooler look. Um, although right now, I'm, I'm pretty okay with it. Uh, so what I want to do now, build, construct, wall. I do want to go into box placement mode. Now, this bottom wall only has to be... Uh, one tile wide is gonna be fine. Let's do this, do this, one of those. Okay, so over here, four, there's that way, three this way, and then from here we connect up to the tower. And I guess what I could do, even though the towers are aligned, what I could do is I go four. I could still have them bulge out a little bit. A little bit of lag after I place this, but it must, must just be the uh, the auto builder, the F hack tools to enable things. There you go. So it's a it's got a little bit of a rounded, chunky kind of look to it. That, that's all right. We went three and three and two in that connector, and then two, three, and three. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to come down here and just eliminate these three, and we will plan a bridge retractable upwards in here, ready to be sealed. And then what I have to do, um, where all these towers are, we have to go in build mode, prepare for up downstairs, we go down a level, and then we're gonna go one, two, th I guess that'll be three tall if I click it twice after, yeah. So here I go down one, click, one, two, click, back up here, uh, down one, click, one, two, click. This could have been part of the initial macro as well, but I was trying not to overwhelm things. And chocolate. And then over here. Down. One, two, click. Oh, hey, Craig Rose. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Hey, Quill. Happy 2022. Third installment in the 2020 trilogy. Also, congrats on finishing. Uh, I assume that was, yeah, Motorsport Manager. I'm really hyped for that. Although, part of the reason I'm hyped is that we get to start Football Manager, which I'm very excited for. Very excited for. Wish the wall was thicker with walkways. Well, um,. The reason the reason it's thin right now, it's going to be taller on the next level. Um, the reason it's thinner now is it, because on the next level, it is going to be wider. So it's going to be walkways with fortifications, but I want it to overhang. I don't want it to be super thick because it actually will help the Marks Dwarves if they're forced to walk directly adjacent to the fortifications. Um, because apparently um, uh, unskilled Marks Dwarves can't really fire through fortifications from a distance. Um... So uh, you, I, this is just what I read. So you want them to ideally like patrol or be stationed right adjacent to the fortification. So what's gonna happen, the level above, I'm gonna have it, um, so that the area that this wall is building, this is gonna be the walking path on the level above. 
but then it's going to be flanked with fortifications. So it's actually going to be a three tile wide wall, um, the tile above and above the towers are going to be five by five instead of three by three, be the same sort of logic. So there's going to be overhang to stop climbers um, and also to provide the fortifications and things like that. So you sort of V-shaped walls, but I mean, sort of a, I mean, it's this, and then you've got the fortifications that go out a little bit, right? I think it's going to look nice. Oh, yeah. I'm going to come down back here. And the idea... From below, we'll be able to access any one of the towers very easily. Just like that, yeah, good. Our stellar case isn't centered up. That's that's fine. I mean, I could, I guess, I could just do this one for that. Doesn't really matter too much, but for consistency, I'm like. What do I want to do with this one? I kind of still, maybe I still kind of want to build the perimeter. Oh. a bit like a shield. Looks a little like the force of the face of a dwarf, too. Uh, in a way. Alright, I think it's going to be good. So yeah, we'll be able to uh, to undermine this area um, and access the towers from below, because there's going to be the, the, the stairway here, but unless the stairway gets built first, currently it's impossible for us to build the stairway until we, we dig out from underneath it. Um, but that's going to be... I think that's going to be fine. Okay, hopefully I didn't... Uh, F up anything, because we're now going to unpause and let this start running. I'm very excited for Steam release. No, I don't think the devs have any hints about exactly when it's going to be available, unfortunately. Plowin has begun a mysterious construction. Oh yeah, what did he end up grabbing? Uh, some rough pyrites. Oh, and another piece of marble. Okay. So excited to see what he's going to make. She's going to make, I think. <laughs> what, what kind of interest does she have? Because that can tweak. What? Oh, it is a he. Uh, limestone, black bronze, pinfire opal, gem socks, the words of the mountains appear. It's really impossible. Consume foxtail. Detest fire snakes. Hmm. Don't think that's really giving us much of a hint. Uh, it won't be a chair there. It might be a musical instrument. Be great if it was an artifact mug, wouldn't it? Ha! Oh, if you make some mug, you have to make him king. <laughs> Wait, are we out of non-economic rock? Really? Because I don't let people craft things out of um, um, out of marble. Because we have marble chunks, they can't craft things out of marble. But strange moods ignore all that. Uh, I don't want to enable marble, but what I can do is I can go ahead and enable this digging out. We don't necessarily all these need these rooms available quite yet, but we can mine this out for more chunks. And speaking of, though, um, I'm going to make a stockpile over here. If I do this, it should just shape it properly. Yeah. Oh, um, I do want to give it the proper type first, though. Which doesn't really matter. Just going to allocate a, a wheelbarrow automatically for us, which honestly, I'm going to change this number to like three anyway. Um, so this is going to be a stockpile purely for non-economic stone or other stone. Um, because this is just going to be stone that we want to chop up into things over here. And let me ask our manager if they could please order three wooden wheelbarrows, because that's how much we need for this. Who's our manager these days? 
Silent Shock. So Silent Shock's gonna put in a, this uh, process, this work order for three wooden wheelbarrows that will eventually be allocated over here. It's gonna be nice. Okay, let's resume. Eh? We got some petitions. <gasps> Guild Hall. So the Fenced Hall, which is a guild of craft dwarves. Uh, they have a bunch of members and would like a guild hall um, to be built over here. And I'm absolutely gonna say yes. It's gonna help keep dwarves happy. Um, also can help them uh, train skills and various things like that. Now this guild hall is gonna be interesting because the craft dwarves here, um, this is the generic craft dwarves, which will include stone crafters, wood crafters, bone crafters, other crafters. Um, they'll all go to the same place. So this is not really going to be linked to a cast. It needs to be mug shaped. I mean, that is the number one thing we make at Crafts Dwarf Workshop, that and bolts. So we're going to prove this request. Where are we going to put these guilds? So part of what I was wondering, this floor over here, especially since we're going to have um, down here, this this gate, which actually I need to link to a lever over here. Let's name this um, Inner Fortress. This is the thing that ultimately delineates the outer fortress versus the inner fortress. Um, and this is really what we're going to use to close the gate when we get migrant waves and things like that um, to enforce quarantines. Uh, it's going to be over here. Um, I'm going to put the lever for this near the dining hall because almost certainly there's going to be some dwarves around here quite often. Um, so in fact, we'll probably plan a bit of a control room really nearby. I think I'm going to do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a room over here. Uh, hold on, that's not quite gonna work. We're gonna want this, I'm sure, three wide hallway. And we can just have a huge set of levers. You know, I might space this out a little bit. Sometimes it looks good if everything's touched together. Sometimes, oh, usually it actually does. If things are clumped up a lot, sometimes it looks a little bit worse. And you know what? We might want like food stockpiles and things over here. I want the control room to be near our dining hall because there's almost always going to be some dwarves nearby, but not super close. Where are we going to put it? I guess I could just put it on the other side by the hospital over here. That's not bad. Do something like this. So this room is going to be filled with various levers to control bridges all over the place. Let me just cut back on this mining area over here. Um, and we'll uh, hook up that inner bridge lever. So guilds do get visits from people from outside the fortress. So I'm wondering about building guild halls, temples as well, perhaps, which could also get visitors from outside the fortress. Our library might all be part of what we consider to be the outer fortress level that is maybe open to visitors. Now, this is currently the Great Hall, but it's really one level down is where the Great Hall is going to be because we're going to channel things down uh, eventually. So maybe this area over here, which is going to be adjacent to the Great Hall, maybe this is the right place for our guild halls and temples and all kinds of stuff. Floor looks like a, a key, perfect for locking the door. Oh yeah, the uh, yeah, that's a good point actually. Should your outside defensive fortress be connected to the inner fortress, prevent newcomers from crossing the cat? I think eventually um, that might be what happens here. I think this is area here is going to get walled off, and then this set of stairs here is going to lead in back here. I think might be the idea. Not sure yet. And this level here looks like a key too. Like if I if I just dug out a bunch of things here that looked like more like thief on a key, it's kind of interesting. Well, or the level down here as well. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend this hallway out this way and then we'll, we'll try to make it like a little bit more interesting. I, I, I do a lot of straight lines, and admittedly, it's great for efficiency, like for, for pathfinding, for easily packing things in. But let's introduce a little bit of diagonal, diagon alleys to our floor. Because we can actually make a, um, we can make like a diamond shaped room in here. Which admittedly might be a little tricksy to draw. And I don't know what we'd want our diamond shaped room to be. to draw this a little faster. Oh, 
Put a little, we could put a museum in there. Although the museum is vulnerable to thieves. And back something like this. So let's plan some guild halls. Now, the guild halls will eventually want to be expanded quite a bit. Although we could also just move them, right? Because I, I was like, oh, I should plan for room for expansion as the guild halls get bigger members and get bigger requests, but I can just move them from one room to another and then reallocate the original smaller rooms to something else. This is still gonna be fairly large. little alcoves, because we can have, like, statues that theoretically represent the different kind of labors and tasks and things like that. Plus add value to the rooms. I think that might look kind of nice. Kind of like that. So I'm just going to record a macro and just reproduce what I did here. I'm just going to place it first. Oh, no, that's too far over. Oh, I think I started the drawing from here, didn't I? for the silence. Just hard to uh, put in the sweet spots here, but at least now I got a bit of a this lined up. Okay. Now we're just going to do the one for now, but we've got space like ready in our planning for a half dozen guild halls and then we can do others there. Um, maybe I should just plant them down now while I've got the macro loaded. I guess I could just save it. Um, there you go. Save my guild hall macro for later. So these are all built into the games, by the way. None of this is DF hack. I, I do need seven guild halls, ultimately. Well, we're going to need more than that. Because the thing is, the guild hall we're building now isn't actually linked to a cast at all. Um, so, yeah. the We're going to need more than seven guild halls. It's going to be confusing and weird. Because this, this is a cross. And it's not bad. Like, here's the thing. Uh, we, to a certain extent, there's some strict separation between the casts, but there's going to be cross-pollinization for all kinds of things. This is an example one, right? Because craft dwarves of different casts are going to come together and examine different techniques. Because you never know, maybe there's something that gets used by the woodwhackers that can apply to the stone knockers or something like that. Plowin has created a marble scepter! I'm sorry, that sounds great. Um, Lyrebekor, a marble scepter. Claims it as a family heirloom. Well, let's take a look at this bad boy. This is our fourth artifact including the artifact with w of which we will not speak of, the wood bow. <laughs> okay, uh, description. This is, so what does it mean? Lyrbekor, the climactic temptation, a marble scepter. Yeah, yeah, and the Sears catalog used to sell shoulder massagers. Anyway. This is a marble scepter. All craft warship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval marble cabochons. This object is adorned with hanging rings of marble and menaces with spikes of marble and pyrite. Okay, it doesn't feel terribly comfortable, but you know, I, I don't know what dwarves are into. There we are, okay. Um, one of the things that um, I, I also want to talk to is with the fort that I played this week, 
Uh, so with these forts, I make ext extensive use of um, workflow, which is DF hack plugin to help manage your, your production queues. So um, you set something to repeat and you can use Alt W to set like target numbers and it will suspend and unsuspend a job uh, as needed. It also protects it, right? Because normally if you set a job to repeat and then it runs out of material, um, Dwarf Fortress cancels the job. What workflow does is it protects the job and it just suspends it until you get resources again, then unsuspends it, um, which is quite nice. Uh, but what I did spend a lot of time with this week with my other fortress is with the job manager. So J lists all the jobs currently queued in your fortress. M is the management job, so your current work orders. And from here you can queue stuff, including you can queue stuff with conditions to repeat and things like that, which is very useful. Um, so for example, um, we could put in a job here to brew drinks from plants. Um, and I could say, listen, let's, let's queue up 10 of them at a time. Okay. So right now, if I don't do anything else, uh, eventually the manager will come validate this order. 10 of these jobs will be queued at any still we have. Um, it'll split it up automatically. You can tell it how many workshops to use, but by default it's zero. So it'll try it. It'll queue one at every still you've got and then queue another one and another one until all 10 jobs are done. Um, and then it will end and it will go away. If down here you see, see, if you hit this, you can do conditions. So right now it is a one-time order, but if you establish any conditions, you can change it to various repeating things. Well, actually, I think you can you can change it to like queue this once a month regardless by itself. Um, but generally speaking, what you do is you'd add a condition of some kind um, to the job. Uh, you can have it linked to another work order, which I haven't experimented with. Um, yeah, you can change the frequency here. So yeah, one time, restart if completed, check daily check monthly, check seasonally, check yearly. So here, this would just requeue, make 10 booze every year um, versus one time order. But we can also add a condition. So if I add a condition and so I can just add an item condition and then implement my own. So just hit A and then you, you have to start programming it. It's kind of annoying, but it does automatically change it to a restart condition. We're gonna delete this. And instead what we're gonna do is add a condition from products. This will automatically make a condition based on what products this job produces. So when you brew a drink from a plant, it produces drinks, it also produces seeds because you get the seed left behind from the plant and this will put limits. So right now it put in a limit where it will only restart if we have at most 10 drinks. So if you have more than 10 drinks or more than 10 seeds, this job won't happen because every condition has to be met for it to restart. Generally speaking for your brew drink, you probably don't care about the seeds. So you would go down to the seed part and delete that bud and just say, listen, if we have, you know, if we have five, 500, if we have no more than 500 drink, right? As long as we have less than 500 booze, do this. Right now, it still says it's not satisfied. We must have more than this. If I set it to a large number like 5,000, see it turns green because I don't have 5,000 drinks. So it would keep queuing up 10 more brew drink every single day um, as, as needed, which is kind of nice. You can also add conditions based on the material used for a job. So if I had R, that's the default template where it'll insert things based on what materials are required for this particular job. So it needs, um, we need drink material plants. So, and we also need somewhere to store it in a barrel, generally speaking, could be jugs and things as well, I think. Um, and so this will put in limits here. So this, to queue up this job, it'll require that we have at least 10 plants sitting around that can be brewed into drinks and at least 10 things to store things in. You can change those numbers and do various things like that. Um, and this is really nice because you don't actually link it to a workshop or anything um, by doing this. Uh, so if you have lots of workshops, it'll auto queue it. It also means you only have a single place to check all your jobs, although, it doesn't really sort them, so it can be hard to find, like, hold on, what's the status of, you know, my job to make tables or whatever? It can be kind of hard to spot in here. Um, but it's nice to have one central location, and it will automatically allocate it to various workshops. Because, now this will work fine with brew drink, but for other things, like, for example, our mug job. Because we're doing this cast-based setup, and we're going to have Craft Dwarf Workshop on at least three different floors, because we're having it on Stone Knockers. We're going to have it on the uh, Flesh Reapers because they're going to do um, they're going to do bone crafts and we're going to have it on the Woodwhackers floor because they're going to make wood crafts as well. And so the here, the work manager wouldn't it would just assign it like if we set up make rock mugs, it would queue it up on all the floors at the same time. So for our particular theme, this won't be ideal. But man, this is a really, 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 really quite good system. Um, you can use this from a workshop itself. So if you go onto a particular workshop like this craft dwarf and you hit shift P for workshop profile, I'm pointing at my screen because that's so helpful. You can, this is the screen. You can choose who's allowed to work here. So we could limit it based on skill, but that still wouldn't set limits. And there's things you can do with link workshops, but I, I think it wouldn't necessarily do the right thing. But if you create a work order here, so here, if I set up a work order for rock mugs, I can still use the 
the planning mode and everything like that to get jobs. I can put in conditions um, for, for you know, limits and things like that. And it would just be linked to this workshop. And I'd be able to see it from the main. If I hit J, oops, if I hit J and M over here, I would see the rock mug job and it would be linked to a particular workshop. So I can still use this instead of the workflow. I might still keep using workflow for now just because I think with workflow, it will be a little bit easier because we're in, because for this fort, because we use like very positional place jobs and things like that. But I think for our next fortress, I will make use of the management orders. That's one of the things I tried to do this week is like, you know what? I've never used the system because originally it wasn't really available. Um, and DF hacks workflow was really kind of the only way to manage this. So I learned workflow. I didn't lose the other, I learned the other bit. And I was like, no, I'll finally learn it. And it's like, okay, no, this actually does work very well. Uh, but annoyingly might not apply to this particular fort. All right, our towers are starting to go up. That's very good news. Um, oh, we should talk about the animal slaughtering. This is some cats just got slaughtered there. Um, we do, I do have some filters. I try to keep my cat population in control. Uh, most of the other critters, we're debating keeping alpacas around maybe for wool things. I think I'm just going to slaughter everything um, outright. That's not uh, pigs, dogs, and cats. So the alpacas, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to set for all new races. We're going to keep zero of all of them. Um, so, and that did reset everything. I've got to manually reset the cats back to where I want them which is uh, two adult female cats, one adult male, uh, let's say up to four child females, like kittens and uh, two male kittens, maybe we'll keep them around. But we'll slaughter the calvies, uh, the cows, don't keep them around. Dogs are gonna keep more of because we are gonna do some war dogs and things like that. Uh, and, well, the, the dog numbers don't matter because I have the watch turned off right now. I'm not slaughtering that at all, but in theory later on we might decide. So I'm gonna put in some, some sane-ish, well, that's that's the wrong one. I was gonna say, I'm gonna put in some sane-ish numbers here in case I decide to turn on butchering for dogs, um, but I don't want them to, uh, but we're still not gonna watch them for now anyway. Uh, there we go, I'm just gonna, if I turn it on, I won't slaughter all the dogs because that would be bad. Donkeys we don't want, goats, horses. Uh, so the pigs we definitely want to keep around. Same sort of thing. I'm going to keep a fair amount because I want a, a pretty big breeding stock, I think, here. So 10 females. A couple over there. I think that's going to be good. Um, reindeers are zeros. That's going to be okay. I should have turned off the auto butchering first because it is setting a lot of butchering cues and I may have to undo those. I think there's a button here. Yo, here, if I hit B, it'll, oh, just for the species, hold on. And make sure to unbutcher the pigs, dogs, cats, and they'll get reset when the watch starts. Uh, turkeys, oh yeah, turkeys as well. I'm just gonna, um, I guess I want it to be monitored. Turn on, clear the butchering. Again, butcher the water buffalo and the yaks. Okay, I think that's gonna be okay. No turkeys were on all birds. I mean, maybe. For now, I mean, we're gonna leave them watch on, but we're gonna have a fairly high number. Wait, oh yeah, fairly high number uh, so that we can have an egg supply and butcher them. But you know, luckily the turkeys, they're gonna be restricted to a particular pens. So we're not really gonna be worried about their pathfinding too much, we'll see. Keep yaks for expeditions. Can you send animals for the expeditions? Yeah, wool and milk might be cool. What I might just do is like decide to enable something and then import them. But for now, I don't really want to monitor them. Where pandas in 321. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, that's there. Oh, how's our um No, no mining has happened here yet. Oh, but this area is mined out, so that's great. So what I want to do is I want to find, first of all, the dining hall. The table that I used to set the dining hall up right over here. I'm gonna change the size. To include this new area over here and then i'm going to make a new zone in here i'm going to switch the mode instead of a rectangle i'm going to go with flow so i can hit enter and embiggen it doesn't quite reach the other side totally i mean this is fine yeah it's gonna be fine so we're gonna make this a meeting zone meeting area which then lets us allocate an area so we're going to add a location and we're going to make an in slash tavern boom the meal of anvils this is not a bad name we can rename it though. I feel like we should do that. Now we can't just name it whatever we want. We have to use this naming system um, where, I mean, we've got a pretty big list of things. We could hit random a couple of times and just see what we end up with. Meal and anvils. I mean, it's not a bad thing for a tavern where you might get food, but it's not really doing it for me. 
The Ekru Rocks, no. The Special Book, no. The Fatal Armory, good name, but not for this. The True Manners, the Fresh Sabers, the Joyous Chamber, that could work. You do like the Meal of Anvils? I mean, we can do that. All right, here. I mean, it, it it's not bad. Oh, um, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong page. I want the. Oh, again, I'm on front compound, which is not where I want to be. The X, there we go. It's interesting, there's like two different meals, Fothcall and Inob. I wonder why, one might be like meal as in like a meal of something, and the other one might be meal as like, like mealy something, I'm not sure. Front adjective. So we want to clear the front adjective. The meal of X. We want to go back to Anvil? Were people happy with that? Of Anvils. What else could we get? The meal of acting ages. The meal of ale? <laughs> Ash, balding balls, bars. The seven mugs. Have numbers? I don't think we've gotten yet numbers. Compound, maybe? Hold on. No. The meal of ale. I like the meal of ale. The beer of beers. The severe mug. Let's go with the meal of ale for now. Or I wonder if mugs is in the list. No. No, neither is goblet. That's too bad. The meal of ales. Grub and mug. Okay, so this is now a tavern known as that. Now, what we can do with these places, so right now all visitors are welcome. So humans and elves and maybe foreign dwarves uh, would come down and visit this tavern over here. We can even assign someone to be a tavern keeper um, and someone to be a performer. In fact, we can have multiple performers if we want. Um, we could change the restrictions. So only residents of our fort can stay here. Citizens and long-term residents only, or citizens only. Yeah, the, if I think if we're allowing visitors, I think we would want to, uh, we could consider doing it like more external. I think this, this is gonna be the tavern for our citizens only. I think that's gonna be the idea. So uh, this is gonna need some storage. So we're gonna go and get some containers. Let me uh, turn off the uh, global settings here so we can choose what container We'll put them back here because they want to keep some mugs in this area. Uh, quartzite coffers, gar let's make sure. I don't, I think the star is the higher quality versus the bars. I'm not sure. I think so because I think it goes like number of lines. So it's like one line, like the, you know, just a minus sign, then an equal sign, then the triple bar. Then I think it goes to star. So I think the star marble coffer is going to be our fanciest coffer that we have access to. So we'll put one over here. Mugs should get stored in here. Bars are excellent. If I go stocks, uh, call it not, not container or coffer. Uh, then it doesn't have the symbols here. It's pure exceptional. Exceptional must be better than the others. Um, can I get a view from here? Because I don't know what the symbol is. I could check it on the wiki. Let's not worry too much. There was a view item when... Oh! Well, I'm hell, I can view it now, apparently. It's superior quality. Place X view item exceptional. Okay, three bars is exceptional, which must be better than the star. Well, I could put both in here. You know, we want this to be fancy. I'll put both extra storage. Well, the only elven civilizations are on a different continent. Uh, if I open up over here, 
Uh, this, this island over here, this is the only place where the elven civilization is, but there's probably elves wandering all over the world. They're just not, you know, they, they're members of, of human or goblin or dwarf civilizations and supposed to their own. They're just not cool enough. Now, so we should have someone always digging. Oh, except it's currently sleeping. It's Pop Cockles over here is set to only dig all the time. Plown is currently doing some digging, so that's good because we have a lot of digging to do. Uh, they are currently, oh yes. I'm like, why are we digging out here? This isn't a high priority. I, I enabled the digging over here because we needed some more rocks. We are out of rocks. So I was like, well, I may as well dig out the rest of this because we need some more. We do have some phylite stored now, which is good. We're no longer getting the error messages. There's a little bit of fighting. Is this a real fight? Oh, this is part of hunting. Yeah, Sarge Dragonus is doing some hunting. What are you hunting? A stork. Kill all birds! Oh, is that the symbol? Thank you very much. So it goes minus plus star, triple bar, and then the dwarf buck symbol. Minus plus star. So subtraction, addition, multiplication, then funkier symbols. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I thought it went minus equal triple bar, which would have been kind of a legitimate way to write it. <laughs> Some gems being cut. What I could do, um, and I think I will actually, is I may turn off the auto cut gems uh, for now because we do get some strange moods that require it. I don't think we can set a limit. Like I can tell how, like what to cut or not cut. I could just like forbid one type to be cut. Um, and then we'd have always some rough gems of that. It'd be nice to just put in the, the task to leave a certain amount. What's annoying is that outside of DF hack, you can't put a generic gem cutting job. Cause like if you go into here and you say cut, you have to choose a type. You can't just say cut gems because this would be the ideal way. Cause you could put a limit only cut gems. If you have more than 10 rough ones, for example. Mm -hmm. There's three lines in the star. I guess that's it. It's minus plus that's two lines. Star is three lines, but then you get another three line thing, which just looks different. So hopefully we're getting more and more blocks to do these walls. Did this all finish up? It did. Good. This is all sealed in this tower. Oh, which means I can remove this ramp here. Hold on. DN. So we had a little ramp here so that our dwarves could walk from this floor onto the wall, access the roof. But now we're done that. So I can remove this, which is going to happen immediately. And then we'll build a wall piece to replace that and seal this in properly. Mm -hmm. I have no idea when Vicky 3 is going to be, Rabid. I just, I just opened this in a box yesterday, along with a few other gifts from Paradox. Currently, I'm as excited, but ignorant as everyone else, unfortunately. I wish I knew. And if I did know, I wouldn't be able to tell you anyway. Actually, it's very likely that I will know the release date the same time as everyone else. I, I uh, um, especially now that we're not having meetings, um, you know, no live events, I almost certainly won't get advanced knowledge on that. I might get an advanced copy of the game so I can prep content ready to go for, you know, a release date or embargo date or something. Uh, but I, won't, I probably won't know anything about the release dates before you guys do. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a new season. Must be winter. Winter is here. Sounds like something that someone knows the date would say. <laughs> yeah, I do want to start answering these no comment, but cause chaos, less to cause chaos and more so that when I get in a situation where I can't answer, it, I don't have a different answer than anything else, but mm -hmm. you'd spam Alistorn. <laughs> Still disappointed with Paradox. They didn't hold off announcing V3 until it was close to release and announced on April 1st. I mean, that would have been just perfection, wouldn't it? Winter is here. One thing that's nice, this fortress I've been playing um, personally during the week is I built in a smaller world. Uh, and man, does the saving egg over go fast. I don't know how much like framework, frame rate I'm saving by having the smaller world, but the saving time is so much shorter. I also only simulated like short history, which is 125 years instead of the standard, which is 250. So again, it, I think it, it, that made it be a lot um, faster. Uh, the shorter history also means a lot fewer wear creatures. Because wear creatures aren't something that gets created like, you know, at the start of history. It's something that happens over the course of time. People knock over altars, their gods, and then get cursed to become either werewolves or, or were creatures or vampires. So the earlier you start, the fewer were creatures there are. On the other hand, a forgotten beasts are created 
before the, the beginning of history. So the earlier in time you are, the more forgotten beasts there are because they haven't been slain. Because no new forgotten beasts get created over time. Mm -hmm. I pinched myself when the Vicky 3 announcement came around. New was watching, but I still couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, small world stuff, tons of stuff going on. Like, that's the thing. This huge world. Oh, yeah, it's so exciting. Except I'm never going to interact with anything over here or over here. Like, or really, we're just going to be on the central continent. And if the if literally it was just this one little island area over here, there would still be a million things to do. So, yeah. Where beast is alive after a long period of time is getting stronger. Where beast do can die of old age. And I don't think they get more powerful over time. I think they're just the same amount of power. Did a small world 550 year history with high civ, high savagery got wiped out by undead in the first year. Reclaimed the fortress, started building a wall, got invaded, and wiped out by undead again. Damn, Pikmin! And I'm happy you're here, Pikmin, since you are you are the mayor of our little realm. Oh, you've got a mandate. Oh, don't export beds. Yeah, that's fine. We do have to start making our fancy room soon. Is anyone cranky? No, everyone's pretty happy. So, um, down in the bottom right corner, you can see some numbers there. We have 64 content dwarves and four that are in a fine mood, in fact. So that's good. No one's cranky, which is good, considering um, they're starting. They're going to start getting some cranky thoughts about not being able to pray uh, and things like that. Wow, the Phylite's getting burned out really fast. We consume it quickly. I mean probably for mug construction. Oh, which does make me think, I do have those um, craft store workshop at the surface. These guys, okay, no, they don't make mugs, which is good, because there, there wouldn't be any stone nearby. They do have the job to decorate with bone. Um, so they will decorate mugs with bone, currently. Mostly as a way to keep the bones down. One of the other things you could do is add in a job to make totems, there it is, totems, which I believe get made out of skulls. Um, so that's a good way to consume extra skulls. Now, this would be a good place to put in a job. Hold on. If I remove this. Nope, not remove the building. That was not what I wanted to do at all. Okay, it doesn't matter. I was going to say, this is a good place to put in the commands over here. So you say you make a totem. Um, and, you know, make, you know, make one at a time or five at a time or whatever. Make one at a time. Um, and then you put in your conditions in here. And this you say, um... As if you've got more than 10 unrotten totemable parts, which I think are just heads, then use it. It's a good way to make sure you don't have, like, too much garbage sitting around. But again, if I just did it through the manager here, what would happen in this case is it would queue up the make totem job at any craft dwarf workshop. So, annoyingly, it is going to be the sort of thing where I'm going to want to make it... Um, I'm going to want to make it on a flesh reaper render, flesh render floor, because that's appropriate for the bone works. Uh, but if I want to manage the job through workshop, I, I don't know if I can set a constraint based on how many input items I have. I can limit the number of totems I want to have kicking around, but that's not really what I'm looking for. That being said, I don't think there's any reason to keep skulls around. I think I can convert all skulls into totems, um, and it doesn't matter. So really, um, really, I could just put an infinite repeating make totem job, consume all our skulls that way. I don't think there's any strange mood that wants skulls specifically. Demand a bed for Pikmin Mega Man. Yeah, so I'm wondering for administrators if maybe this upper floor. Well, no, we don't want it to be any part of the fortress that's considered outside. I guess maybe we put it on the uh, Life Miner floor over here. You know, because thematically, part of the idea is the Life Miners are also going to be sort of hospitality staff, cleaners, you know, things like that. Um, is thematically what I'm going to be looking for. So I think it might make sense for some of our more elite rooms to be on this level. You know, we can carve out some area over here for some fancy rooms. You can set region to... Oh, that's right, through the... Hang on. So I set up a totem job over here, and... With the F hack, you hit um, Alt-A, right? For here. I mean, you can set requirements. I don't know if you can set numbers and amounts. Oh, re you're, okay, Ratnack. No, the regional requirements for input items, That's again, that's something you can do through the, the manager, this screen over here. But, okay, hold on. I guess what I could do is I can use the profile screen here, work orders here, set the job here, and then put in the requirements. Yeah, that would work. 
Because, yeah, I guess there's no reason to use Workflow because you can access all those commands through the Profile Manager on a particular workshop through the Work Order screen over here. It is a little bit more clicking than Workflow, but you do have a little bit more control. So we might, yeah, we might end up using that. I should probably just not use Workflow at all. I should just standardize on not Workflow. Maybe I will, actually. Yeah, sorry, no reckon that. Yeah, so yeah, there's just two different things. I I really like the global orders over here, but I, I really will have to use the per workshop. And with the per workshop, I tend to use workflow because it's fewer clicks. Um, and thematically, because of what we're doing, we're doing a lot of per workshop here. But yeah, I guess I can use the, uh, the workshop orders per workshop still. Okay, I'm not going to smooth everything out over here right now because we're not actively using a lot of these rooms and mostly we just need to dig rocks. You see these little black squares around some of these stones? That's because I have the redraw all turned off because it can cause crashes. But if I like move up and down, there you go. See, it clears those black squares. So if you have the redraw tile turned off for text will be text, you might get a few of those artifacts, but you won't get any crashing. And overall, the no crashing is better. And it's almost like those artifacts are a big problem. The biggest thing I noticed is um, with like bridges and things that have extra like details and stuff with this tile set, that can leave a couple extras. Yeah, I think we are running low on boulders again. Well, we're gonna be doing some more excavating, like over here. So this is gonna generate some more boulders, which is good. Did we actually get errors about it? No. We are getting some jobs interrupted by these white storks. Hopefully our hunters can keep them under control. I like the first move made everything of the lock that disappear everywhere. Yeah, sometimes it's like left or right, we'll remove it. Up and down might clear it. Depends on what it is. And then sometimes it's like literally go up a floor, down a floor. Sometimes it creates it. It's because by default, Dwarf Fortress optimizes things by not redrawing every tile. If it, something doesn't have to be drawn, which can happen if like two things are next to each other, then what happens if you move to the side, Dwarf Fortress is like, well, I don't have to redraw it because it's like, it was a boulder. It's still a boulder. It's just a different boulder, sure, but I don't have to redraw it. Um... But uh, yeah, so it does that. Wow, that's a lot of gems there. So I was going to do a vein dig out there to get a sense of what it looked because it like, well, this might inform where we place things. I don't know. Sounds good to me. Let's use this uh, the entrance and we're going to build ourselves a nice mayor's room. How many dwarf children do we have? I don't know how to filter for that. I don't know if there's a list of, for children's anywhere. It's not like they have their own title. Oh, that's okay. Hold on. Are they always at the bottom of the list? Oh, well then that might work. So we have four babies and five children. And then we have one child like grow up as well. You have nine, they're on the list. Are they? Dwarven children right here. Ah, excellent. Oh, combat. Mickey is fighting a buzzard woman. All right. Our time in the momentous universe is so brief. I love that our world is called the momentous universe. This does not scare me. Okay, so you weren't affected by that. You were fighting a buzzard woman on the surface. Now, Mickey, are you actually in the military? No, you're not, because you have a... A title. You're you're a plant tender. Jeez, but apparently you're not you're not scared by combat. So plant tender just sees the buzzer woman, grabs her by the foot, you know, hold her down so she can't fly away. This is my fight too. There's no need to feel vengeful. Bends the buzzer woman's right foot with her with the plant tender's left upper arm, and the right ankle collapses. Just snaps her leg like a twig. Then punches her in the head. Oh my god. Uh, Makey, you are violent. Plant him. Not in the military. Woof. Damn. That was brutal. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have to decide what we're doing with this floor. Yeah, let's get some plant stuff going on. I mean, we have food. Actually, we have 2,000 plants. We did a lot of picking of plants on the surface. So actually, we're not really in a rush here. Although, it'd be nice to get maybe a cloth industry going on. Maybe they should be put in the military. You're not wrong. Our hatred of buzzers has been taught to all. Yeah, all, all birds must die. Um, I mean, it's not particularly interesting, but I am actually just wondering about carving out 
all the space over here. We're gonna make our own, our own flat area with blackjack and hookers. Like this, a large area over here, just as much space as we can. We'll get this carved out. Um, and then we'll get uh, we'll get a little pumping area. I can actually plan plan for that now somewhere. A little door. What area gets blocked? I think it's, so it's like that. It pumps it here. I think this area can't be stood on, but this one can. But you know, we'll we'll dig this out first, and we'll deal with the next part after this. Way to pump the water out is long term project. Um. We could dump it down into a, a deeper uh, cavern layer or something like that. And pump it out into the surface and let it run away somewhere. I don't, I don't mind having a lot of this water. But one thing we could do right now is we could plan for a, a well. That's an interesting idea. Because we have our hospital here. And the hospital is the one area that you're most likely going to want access to water. Now, the downside is if I dig down here, it is going to affect, like, all the levels below us as well. So it'd be a well right in the middle here. Because it's just, you know, one giant shaft, one giant hole. Now, it's not the end of the world. Well, it wouldn't hit, us, hit anything anyway. Um, well, if we could build the well off the end here. And that would go through some rooms, but it's not the end of the world. I don't know. I'm doing a surface remote. True. I mean, some creatures can swim. So it's actually, like, theoretically less secure to fill a moat with water than to leave it empty. It's a little counterintuitive. But not really. I mean, even in real life. Right? I mean, I guess because of climbing? Like, in real life, why would you fill a moat around a castle as opposed to just keeping chasm? <gasps> Warwolf has been possessed. So this is a fell mood, or strange mood, sorry, um, which will lead to an artifact. Possessed, unfortunately, is the kind that doesn't lead to a skill. Oh, I never checked Plowin, because the possession happened last time, although I think that was possessed as well. Plowin, yeah. Uh, Plowin, okay, Plowin did get XP. Oh, you are legendary, because as, as soon as you hit 15, you're legendary. So no, Plowin did get to become a legendary stone crafter. We've got a couple with Hyderman. Well, what I'm going to do, um, maybe, is I'll just keep them... You know, I kind of like the idea. Hutterman, I'm going to clear this. Because stone crafting is something we always have going on. All the time. Because we're making mugs. So Hyderman and Plowen are just going to have only those two jobs. And I'll actually remove the job from Sirawato over here. So Plowen and Hutterman, which are both legendary uh, stone crafters. Stone crafting over here. They will be full time making us basically mugs. Moats immobilize invaders for the archers to shoot better. Maybe because of swimming. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, where? Yeah, another attempt to be king. Right. If you make our cell, if you make a uh... werewolf, yeah, it doesn't. Oh, it's carpenter's workshop this time. Ah, oh, so it is different. It's, it's clearly not going to be a mug. Could be a bed. Now that would be interesting because our mayor, because the mayor is um, mandating like forbidding the export of beds. I suspect that means that. Pikmin Mega Master over here must love beds. Yep, right over here. Loves beds. So, I mean, we'll clearly have to put the artifact bed in his room once we uh, once we have that happening. Okay, so we know these are going to be gems. What about these rooms to look like? I often like having the first room being the office, right? You know, you come in, you have your meeting, something like that. Maybe I'll have it off to the side because... You know, we could have the, the table and chairs over here. Maybe a few more chairs over here is a bit of a sitting room for, like, other people who are going to be coming next to talk um, yet. So I kind of like that idea. You know, you come in, marriage to the right, tells you to go sit down over there. Uh, mostly because I, I kind of like making double doors, but the desk has to sit in a line. Like, I guess I could make a single door, and then it would be lined up this way. But I think we'll do that. We'll have sort of, you know, desk on one side, some extra chairs, maybe a nice statue over here as a waiting area. Making question mark shaped. Oh, we could literally...
What do you think of my font? good with this fancy so we can have a fun sort of dining area and a little bedroom I don't know I think we still like <laughs> dining area then we still need a bedroom it becomes a little awkward it's like a quill and an ink pot oh that's quite cool I like that A bedroom. We can do a semicolon for some reason. Like I, I don't know why this is happening, but sometimes it's better not to ask why. Question mark semicolon. Just because we can. Make the bottom of the ink pot a little ladder. I guess if we do this, it would really look like an ink pot. Oh yeah, that, oh, that really looks like a quill and ink pot. Well, I kind of like that. Now Nintero Bang! We're just gonna go with it. It's because it doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any sense. There you go. And Daryl Bang is what? Question mark, exclamation mark, right? And it's to represent, uh, like, sarcasm? Is that it? I think so. In my alphabet, there are only 25 letters. I don't know why. Ha <laughs> ha, Sidious! <laughs> oh, this could be our library! Maybe we should just make this our library? It's kind of big for a library. Kind of makes sense, though, right? All right, different different area for the mayor's chamber. You can get an entrance hall this time. Uh, into a little office for him. I don't know, bigger? Bedroom, and then you can have a sort of a, a nice dining hall over here. Maybe just something like this. Well, um, yeah, the, the, should the library be building the outer port of the far? We weren't sure, and that's if we're gonna have visiting scholars, then yeah. Um, the problem is, I don't want to redraw this. That looks so good. We could have two libraries, we could have one for our personal dwarves, you know, permanent citizens only, and then we can have another one. Let's just start with this because we can. Because we did. So we're going to do that. I'll be the mayor's office. We will need one for the captain of the guard as well. Um, Brixified over here. Would also like somewhere a little fancy. Again, we'll still do it on the life miners um, stage. Oh, this area got uh, dug out here. So we're going to build a bunch of levers. Many of them won't be connected to anything yet. Not just the mayor's personal library. I mean, it could be. We could pretend about that, or I don't know. Axe or hammer shape. Maybe even something with a shield for the captain of the guard. It would be cool to keep, like, pushing our, our, our artistic limits. All right, this is coming along. Oh, there you go. There's a war wolf. It's probably hauling some wood here. Oh! Reindeer bull... Horn or bone. I guess it was bone. Huh. Alright. 
Time to hit up the pixel art pages for room designs. Yeah. Still going on over here. But it should be a pretty good room. If we take a look at the uh, Mr. Chi over here, take a look at their uh, their thoughts. Why should I help? In the last scene, felt fondness, intellectual conversation, satisfied sharing personal insight, euphoric journey integration, blissful in a fantastic dining room. So it's the dining room is only fantastic right now, but it's gonna get there. We'll get it to legendary. Kevin will guard to be in smithing floor too. It might be limited by material. Things gotta be hauled. I mean, uh, part of it is it's our stone knocker. I think we do have to extend, expand our stone knocker ranks. I just, I don't think there's any way around it. More peasants. There you go, Satani, yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm just gonna officially assign Satani to the life miners because I want them doing doctory things. Let's get you out of there. Um, can you not see their physical attributes in here? See the personality. I mean, I guess I can go to the the attributes thing over here, which as it'd be nice to to keep the people who are strong or quick to recuperate or something like that for the military, uh, which you can see in their description. Here the numbers are a little spoilerish, I guess. Um, but we could go through each one of these and check the description. Mostly, it's like for for example, for the dwarves that are slow to recover, um, you really don't want them to get injured uh, because they'll pretty much die. So like. Uh, Adder's Jr. Rides Again, for example, uh, has no ability to recover from injury at all and would be a terrible pick for the military. Same as Mr. Brightside over here. They, they would be awful picks with that. They're pretty strong, which is nice, but yeah, they, they are going to just die. So if we were to check those in-game, let's go and see that. Um, Q, Adder's over here. If we were to view you... Oh, your arm is already dented. You're already injured and really slow to heal. You see this? Uh, you're durable and strong, which sounds good, but clumsy, slow to heal, not a good choice for the military, for example. So um, I think what we're going to do... Oh, construct building is on. That's right. Did I turn on... Well, construction's on for the peasants, but it's it's masonry for these uh, stone walls. And really, we want more digging, more engraving. So what I'm going to do with these two is I'm going to make them both stone knockers because they're wood cutting and wood crafting. We're gonna ignore those because we don't really need that. So we'll just go and make you stone knockers because we don't want to draft you into the military anyway. Done. Okay, and we'll leave all the labors on for you right now. We'll see what you develop. We did just trade with the dwarves, so we should be getting um, you know more uh, more migrants. No need to be good at healing if you're an archer. That's true. Although, um, Adder's was clumsy, which I think means bad for archery. Although, some of the traits do develop over time. I don't know if agility does. I know strength, you can definitely develop it. I don't know about toughness. I think you develop toughness um, maybe by, by being injured and recovering from it. Uh, I know you can train dodging and stuff in, like, danger rooms. I don't know if you develop, like, the dodging skill. I don't know if it changes your agility, though. Best way to build muscle? I mean, you can make them miners. That's a good way to do it. The other way is you get them to work pumps. Even pumps that don't do anything. You have a bunch of dummy pumps, turn them on, and just, like, throw some people in there to, like, just work the pumps for, like, a couple of months, and they're going to come out, like, looking like Arnold during Conan. Peachwood Casket. Mogs Humushul. Let's take a look at Mogs Humushul, the Peachwood Casket. I kind of I dig it. I mean, it's a little bit foreboding. But we'll see. We're going to pump you up. That's right. It's Hans and Franz. This is a peachwood casket. Oh, what does it mean? Elbow Realm. Not a winning name. This is a peachwood casket. All craft warship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval quartzite cabochons and round marble cabochons, decorated with yak bone and encircled with bands of peachwood. This object menaces with spikes of peachwood. On the item is an image of Blench Shred, the match of afflictions, the intricate pond turtle shell left gauntlet in Cresso Barrel. So this is another, um, this is another artifact, Blench Shred. I don't believe it's one we made, not even in our previous fort, I don't think. On the item, as well, is an image of 
Ushrir Lancerpage, the dwarf and dwarves in reindeer bone. Ushrir Lancerpage is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf to the position of Baron of the Letters of Notching in 47. Letters of Notching is our civilization. 47 was 200 years ago, though. But yeah, so some guy eventually became a baron. Good for him. Also, on the item is an image of four-sided, long, four-sided prisms. Of four-sided, long, four-sided prisms in amethyst. All right. How much is it worth? 57,000 dwarf bucks. That's pretty good. That's probably our most valuable artifact to date by far. By far. Yeah. Okay. This is more hunting. Uh, soldiers are fighting. Ah, buzzard woman. Yeah, they're engaging another buzzard woman. All right, good. We might be able to recover some more arrows soon. Let's get these walls up. Tesseract. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a four-dimensional um, object. How much was the uh, scepter worth? <laughs> uh, a 12,000 dwarf bucks. Yes, our scepter. Let's get dug out. No, not yet. Struck amethyst. Uh -huh. Tell you what, let's mine out that amethyst. I'm gonna want to mine this one out. Yeah, we'll leave it for now. So we're not exactly sure what kind of layout we want. But we don't. Our stone knockers are just way too busy. Oh, did he become legend? He shouldn't have. Um, who was that? That was War Warwolf, right? Because he was possessed. So I don't think he would have gotten the skill for that. Is he, was he a woodwhacker? Yeah. No. And so uh, his carpentry skill, which is what he used, he's, his carpentry is not even enabled. It's three. He's still rusty. He literally didn't get any experience. He got no credit at all for performing that task of carpentry. I guess he was possessed by like the spirit of an old dwarf. So that dwarf was responsible for doing the work, right? And that was all. It wasn't actually Warwolf um, themselves. Someone who's played a bunch of Paradox and Eve, this game intimidates me. Uh, Mark, yeah. But it, it, wait, once you start going, you don't even see the code anymore, man. Like the Matrix. Nearly done smoothing over here. I mean, we do have a lot of smoothing jobs, and they're keeping a lot of our stone knockers quite busy as well. It's not helping things. Is this by the spirit of the dead dwarf to make the casket he should have gotten? Oh, mine. Yeah, I like that idea. You say it's Erica Hoff's spirit that possessed... But we're not going to change where... I don't even know if you can de-untomb a dwarf. I can remove this building. I don't know if that removes the dwarf from the casket. No idea. How's our... Are any of these installed? I don't think so. Need mechanics. Okay, so that's interesting because... So that's our fort builder. Who's currently storing items? I think Dunvi. We had um, we had hauling on Dunvi because there wasn't really a lot of um, a lot of asking for his particular actual fort building talents. We're just gonna reset the fort builder stuff over here. You're still you still you didn't remove any hauling. Well, maybe you're just storing some clothes somewhere. Because levers construct deconstruct, mechanics architecture siege. Okay, no, so Dunby should be coming down here very soon. Yeah, construct rock. Oh, yeah, you got to build the mechanisms, which are used for the traps. So some are probably getting uh, used up over there. You know, I think it's time for a second fort builder. We only got the one. Let's get that going. So, out of our peasants, who are we going to assign to that? Well, first of all, do any of them already have any skill in mechanics or architecture or siege engineering? Well, McBain over here, um, who's also could do blacksmithing but does have a little bit of uh experience in siege engineering and siege operating so you know, he, mcbain has brought in his cv applied for the job we gave him the interview sure all right you can become a fort builder there we are so they can help build mechanisms and also install the levers and connect them all up and things like that excellent Well, there we go. Digging out these rooms over here, finally. Lovely. Walls are going up. Now, one thing we could do is I could enable masonry on all of our peasants with the idea that they're just they're just there to hold the rocks up, right? 
you know, and we've got our master fort builder slash stone knockers there to actually do the final construction. Um, if we set the mason shop, which I've, I guess I did do before. I've done that previously. These mason shops, I gave them limiting skills. Well, I guess anyone can work the rock blocks. But this mason shop where you actually build the rock furniture, we have it limited to a certain, like, you need to be at least competent or something like that. Uh, those shouldn't be which marble boulders. Oh, these over here, these should be marble boulders, yeah. Uh, so there, are, these boulders here are only going to get used for, um, uh, as part of our steel industry. That's true, so we might, yeah, we are low on phyllite again. Okay, well, tell you what, let's start working on bedrooms for our stone knockers which will also open up more area. So I'm gonna go, so this is their work floor. I'm gonna go down one floor over here and we're gonna start carving up bedrooms for them. Now, I don't wanna do square layouts. I wanna do something cool. Well, I, I, I don't think we're gonna do anything with a particular pattern. I'm just gonna try to like, just shake things up a little bit. So uh, we got mine. I'm gonna just record a little macro, which is literally just a little square. Maybe should we do three by three bedrooms? Cause there's not gonna be that many people assigned to these rooms. Let's do three by three. Let's do that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of slap down. Uh, actually, that's not quite, quite so well. actually do diagonals with ro doors. Yeah, that's true, actually. I did this. We can put doors in these corners here, because doors can walk through, like, diagonal entrances. I like. Maybe that's the way to do it. We could get a little Tetrisy or something, you know? 
in my head, the reason they're ending up with something like this is because they're they're following the natural like flow and grain of like certain rock, like veins and things like that, you know. Uh, if I wanted to expand this right now, the only way I could expand it is out this way, which I don't really like the idea of. Expand it south or west. I don't know, maybe I should leave it in. I think it's east here. Okay, so different sizes and things. You know, maybe they'll be jealous of one another. Maybe, you know, some will be happier that they're closer to the entrance. I don't know. Something like this? We'll see. Uh, we got whiskey and chocolate. Where's that? Whiskey and chocolate! From... Refresh, please. Thank you! Hey, it's no one! Hey, no one! Thank you. Refresh my idea you liked from last week. Vertical warrens for bedrooms around a central stair. Yes. I do like that. Um, that would be good, I think, for apartment blocks and various things. I think we might do something like that for our peasants, or the peasants might just be big dormitories. But the stone knocker, like, there's not going to be that many to cast. And this gives us a lot of bedrooms. Um, right now, how many stone knockers do we have? Eleven. And we have more than, we have more than eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So, I think I like this, and it can expand. I think I'm kind of okay with this. So, partly, this gives us more digging so that we can get some more stone. But then also, we can start putting those dwarves in happy areas. I do like the idea of vertical warrens. I, I, I still like the idea of that, like, um, over here. Oh, this all got dug out. Excellent. Um, you know, in, in the walls of the caverns. So uh, imagine, like, a bunch of bedrooms, you know, along the cavern walls here, some apartments, and then the central staircase sort of here for a few levels. Kind of dig that idea. Expanding the north. That's okay. Uh, we don't need that much more expansion for the stone knockers because there's never going to be that many. I mean, it might swell to something like 20 and be like a 10% of our entire population. Uh, but, I, you know, yeah, and it would look fine with the way the expansion is. And we can wrap things around. It's going to be okay. Because I actually want to draft a lot of our dwarves in the military. Okay. So... mine out that tile. I'm put in a request for a uh, wood screw, corkscrew one, which we're going to need for a screw pump. I think that's the only thing we need. Maybe a mechanism, but we'll have that. I dig that idea. <laughs> I'm coming tavern for it. So let's confirm this is open space, so popping this isn't going to uh, do anything bad, which is good. Um, we will make sure there's a door over here. And then I think what I'm going to do, after I get the screw pump, because I can't remember what tile you stand on. I think... I think the tile that is adjacent to the water you can walk on, and the one that's away you can't. And I think the dwarf has to stand here. So I think what we need to do is dig this out as well. And then what I'm going to do, it could have I could have avoided some digging, but since I didn't... I want to have a little room... I want the dwarf to be able to stand here and be dry. I need diagonals. I think I can dig out a little bit more here, which I will do. Because I think I'll put the screw pump here, build a little room, wall things off so that the dwarf himself can get in and out. Yeah. I could have dug out a little bit less. 
So I think we're, we have a little room here. The dwarf can come here. It'll pump into this. And the dwarf that's doing the pumping is going to be fine. And this door should be okay. Um, if things get in the doorway, it can cause problems and stuff. But since there should be no traffic through here, what we can do is just we can just lock the door once we're satisfied with the situation. Fingers crossed. We shall find out. There we go. Corkscrew's done already. Nice. Just gotta wait for our miners, which are a little bit occupied. Oh, we struck some more limonite. Where did we strike limonite? Oh! Oh, neat. A little down over here. Oh, well, well. Well, why don't you dig an up-down staircase over here? So this is down from our tower, like, access route. Oh, that's quite good. And then we'll mine some more of that out later. Alright, this is coming along, which is great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go level up, and I'm going to plan down more of these up-down staircases where the towers are supposed to be. So we can start building the next level. there's a forgotten beast coming could be oh unpause please we're producing masterpiece mugs which is going to be great very very good yeah with the, the super asterisks the dwarf bucks asterisks up only down only what what do we what oh um i mean yeah they could be down only we might just floor above it anyway i may as well build up downstairs here because then if we decide to do even higher, taller stuff, then we can, and it's going to be okay. But it could be, like, up downstairs, up there's just a, a floor above, so you can't actually go up. And that's going to be fine. Why are you yellow? What does yellow represent? Are you cranky? I don't feel anything. No, no one's cranky. Is that hunger? Or is that on patrol? Do they have the yellow area when they're on patrol? No, because only one of these two. So there's two dwarfs patrolling. Only one of those two has the yellow arrow. Are you guys making fun that, like, no, the staircase only goes up. You can't walk down the stairs. <laughs> they do like that. Okay. Let's start... Okay, so you can walk on top of the floor, the walls. In fact, from this point of view, they count as floor. So what we need to do now is we need to construct... Now, I guess I don't have to construct... I constructed the wall and then carved a fortification so we can walk on top of it, just in case we wanted to, and then construct more things on top. But I guess I don't have to do this here. So we can save steps by going directly into construct fortification. Because then we don't have to come back and carve it later. Hungry is brown arrow. So yeah, what is yellow? Does anyone know? Yellow arrow means distracted. Okay, now here's a bit of a thing. If I order something... Build, construct, oops. If I order something to be built, say, here, I don't think a dwarf can build here. Because I don't think... Can they build diagonally if there's nothing adjacent? Or does it need to be a floor? I don't think this can get built. Uh, oh, I guess I can find... Well, I don't know if this will work. If I go here, if I turn off planning mode... And turn off the uh, box selection. Just use normal placement. Yeah, see, it lets me place here, but it doesn't let me place on the point. Because it needs... Construction, you have to be... You have to build from an orthogonal tile. Now, I could temporarily piece, put a piece of floor right here, where this green X is. And that would let me build this, and I could tear the floor down. I don't know if I need the diagonal fortification. I mean, technically, things can walk through diagonals. Maybe birds. Birds might be able to fly through the diagonals, which would obviously be bad. Hmm. Do I just build a lot of temporary floors so I can do the corner fortifications? Hmm. 
Flying Forgotten Beast. Yeah, I think we have to seal in these diagonals. I might just do it with a bunch of temporary floors. Which we then have to deconstruct. Because you can't you can't place a construction on another construction. You can't place a, a, a wall on a constructed floor. Which is a little annoying. <sighs> All right. So anywhere that there's going to have to be a corner, I'm going to have to do some of this. I'll just deal with this outside wall stuff first. God, why didn't I just build these walls straight? Oh yeah, because it'll look cooler this way. That's what I get for valuing form over function. Okay, I think that'll cover all those outside bits. Um, I guess, well, actually what I can do is I can go build, uh, construct fortification. Oh, I missed one. Probably won't be the last. silent this long. Oh, I missed this area here. Um, I guess I can build the board here. Follow the same pattern as some of the others, but that's okay. Okay. Well, if I missed anything else, we can always just put it in later. As long as it, hopefully I didn't build anything unnecessary, but I don't think so. And then we'll do the inside. That's one on the bottom left, too. Oh. Right here, I think. Right, that one where I was missing the floor and then I put the temporary floor in, but I didn't cover it. Okay, right, let's start with that. And I think I'm gonna wanna do um, an inner fortification as well. It's not as important though, not, not even, not remotely close, but theoretically, if goblins or something got inside of this wall, um, we'd still want to be able to shoot in at them while having our own defenses. Because some goblins are archers, right? Uh, although, I guess there's asymmetry. I don't think there will be asymmetry when I'm done. Ah, it's because I have two pieces of floor here, 
one of these pieces wasn't required. I could have actually not built this one here, and then that would have been the symmetry. But this piece of floor is going to be removed. I guess I could save the labor. Right here, this piece of floor wasn't required, which means we can build, construct the fortification right there. And then I think now it looks symmetrical. Uh, there's another bit here, but I think it's because there's there's more floor than I need. Oh, no! Or... Oh, it's just because of the graphic mode ran. If I unpause... Oh, here, it's because I bit the floor here versus here. Either one works. That'll come out the same, so that's okay. Why is there a gap here? It's just a floor that hasn't been built? This one here? Yeah, there's some suspension. Um, I don't know if I... Let's run auto-suspend. If there's any suspended construction... Whoa. Auto suspend is not a recognized command. What? Yes, it is. Oh, it should be auto unsuspend. This is the same. So you can run unsuspend. What it does is it will unsuspend suspended construction. Auto unsuspend will run that command every X, pretty often. I think it's every few seconds uh, to deal with like shit when like stuff gets in the way and then so construction gets suspended and then you don't notice that it does. And then like an invasion comes and there's a giant hole in your wall because some job never got finished. And you're like, the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I think once the floors are gone, I think we're gonna get our symmetry. Because the, the floors are, are, we're just completely just temporary little things to, uh, to help us complete stuff. Although I'm gonna have to remember <laughs> Actually, does it let me remove construction? Oh, yeah, so the green bits are removable. So all these little green C's here, those are going to be things that are going to get removed later on and then filled in with fortifications. I think we'll be okay. And then I want to roof the entire area as well. That's a whole other, whole other thing. See, suspension was just stopped because there's an item blocking a site. Uh, and so that would cause the suspension, the, the job to be suspended. And then if you don't remember to check for it later on, very annoying. So yeah, why are you distracted? So is that the, the, the yellow? Is we think they're distracted? He's bored. Okay. All right. Bored couldn't fit, do a craft, uh, being unoccupied for too long, not able to pray. Okay. So we're starting to start getting some of these like moods that are going to start dropping because of a few things. First of all, we should be able to get get some praying. The other thing I want to do is I do want to give these guys some gaps in their time. The tunnel stakes, do they even have a barracks? We just created the squad because we were going to go... Uh, we created the tunnel stakes in preparation for opening up a cavern. Turns out they're not going to need to defend that cavern. We kind of need to get down to cavern two. Um, what I do want to do is give some of these guys a little bit of time off. I think maybe I'll, I'll have them on for two months and then give them a third, a third month off. So they get a little bit of time off in between. So that's going to be one thing. Although, if any dwarves aren't doing this, right? If I, well, I'm setting minimums, I guess. Because there's six that should be training at any given time and two on patrol. Is that going to cycle two idlers to take time off? That's something I don't know. But one of the things our military dwarves, and this is going to be the same thing with our peasants, is they're going to get this... They're going to get unhappy that they haven't been able to perform a craft for a while. So I have a plan for that. Because dwarves want to be able to practice something. I think they want to be able to practice a mutable skill. Is there a gap there that never got finished? Oh, no. Um, so I had this idea. And part of the problem is like, well, the peasants and soldiers and things like that aren't necessarily supposed to be allowed to practice a mutable skill, right? Because they're a caste system. But my metal shapers have an idea. They have an idea for a little side hustle, a little side business. They have a they have a slight commercial streak in them. And that's part of the reason is, oh, am I forgetting? I want to start minting some coins. Oh, well. Um, well. We'll talk about some coins soon. So the metal crafters have a little bit of an idea. I was thinking they would build a little, a little room over here. Look at this. We'll, uh, we'll have a little like front counter. Yeah, so you walk in this way. A little counter here, a little chair behind it. And then we'll have a little bit of a room back here. And this room... We'll have a bunch of metal crafting workshops. Metal, metal, metal forges. And dwarves can come in here and pay. There's not going to be a currency in the thing, but imagine, you know, they're paying at the front. And we're going to have a build-a-bolt workshop. Build-a-bolt. You can create your own. You get to personalize it with your own, like, little feathers for the fletching, different heads for the bolt, 
um, you know, maybe like, you know, add some extra little detail. We have some little paints in the corner that you can finger paint and stuff, a little bolt buildable. And this will be open to all. Um, and the idea being, one, it will let them satisfy their need to create something. Two, it will mean that every dwarf in our fortress, theoretically, can be at least a novice weaponsmith. Because I believe crafting metal bolts, I think crafting um, wooden bolts, I'm not sure. Crafting wooden bolts, I think, gives you wood crafting. Oh, maybe even metal bolts give you metal crafting. Fuck. I'll have to call it something else. It might be metal crafting. We'll have to see. What I wanted to do is give every one of my dwarves this, A, a task for them to idle at and satisfy their desire, but also so that they can get one point of novice in weaponsmithing. So if they get in a strange mood, they make an artifact weapon. That's the plan. I want to set it up so that dwarves that go into a strange mood can make us artifact weapons. Metal bolts are made by metal smiths or weaponsmiths. That's what I thought. I was like, I thought I just checked the wiki. What are wooden bolts made out of, though? What do we wooden bolts? I'll expand that. Is it wood crafting? I think it's wood crafting for wooden bolts, and bone bolts are made by bone crafters. Leave it to Quill to surreptitiously train all his dwarves to contribute to the cause. <laughs> Build the battle axe. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think you can do really cheesy things as well. I think you can melt down stacks of bolts and get like more metal out of it than you used. That's not what I'm looking for. You know, losing a masterwork bolt leads to unhappiness. What? Make them build socks. <laughs> I mean, we could have a bunch of like clothiers that, that get strange mood and make us legendary cloth, but I'm really hoping we get some legendary weapons. But build a bolt just sounds so much like build a bear is what I was going for. Um, I think there was another one. I was toying with a different idea for a while. Well, I, for a while I thought about build a mug workshops, right? Because so thematically with what we do with mugs and things like that. You can melt individual bolts that have been fired and collect back into bars. Yeah, this, so there's like these little abuses, which I'm not necessarily targeting. Although I would like to be able to melt like, um, uh, what do they call it? Goblinite? <laughs> Right, if you get a goblin siege and they drop a bunch of random metal shit, then you melt that down and make something useful out of it. Oh, some, these are gems, right? Goshenite. Well, gosh, I don't know what that is, but it does sound like a gem. So let's go ahead and just pull those out of the walls while we're at it. Okay, how's our um, water layer? Okay, that's looking okay. I'm happy these rocks are getting removed out of here as well. Plan for a door there, and then build. Don't under trap or anything, right? I think it's under the main category. Probably near the bottom. Screw pump. I don't see screw pump in the list. Where is it? A machine components, I bet. There it is. Screw pump. Okay. Pump from north. No, so we need to change the direction. Is it not those keys? Oh, it's these keys. Well, that's annoying. So when you use when you're trying to pick a direction for a bridge, use W A D X. But apparently for the screw pumps, you use U M K H. Pump from the south. I think the dark square is impassable. Because the idea is this this is gonna make this into a reservoir. So water will flow in and it won't flow back out through this, but you also can't walk through this. So if we look now, this, assuming we lock this door so no dwarves get in here, which actually I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna forbid passage. It means these rocks here will be inaccessible for a while, but that's okay. It should be perfectly fine. We'll do a little bit of pumping, put the water in. We might want an option for pump for taking the water out. Otherwise we have to wait for it to dry. Dark's impassable because the dwarf has to stand in the light. Oh, that's nice. Um, because pumping does happen very quickly, but it's probably okay. Oh, um, I want to cancel this because I just realized I pump, I screw pump. We're doing it with the, um, the planning mode on. Pump from south. And I just want to get a note. No access to blocks. No access to screw trap. Screw trap? Wait, how do you not have access to anything? Oh, because it has to be built from here. Okay, hold on. I will. 
permit pack in the passage. Build MS. We don't have blocks. Oh, because we're using all the blocks for construction. But we also need to build the pipe section. So hold on. We're going to queue up. A, but it has access to the trap section, i.e. the screw pump. Um, wood pipe. So we're going to build a wood pipe section. But yeah, we, uh, we're we using up all our blocks for construction. Okay, so what this means is we need to build um, workshop masons. We need to build more masons workshops here. Yeah, and actually just build them out of like just pure stone right now because we have the, the block shortage. Once those get built, what we're gonna do is we're gonna order more block production, but I think we have to do, we have to make some more just quarries basically is what we have to do. We just have to mine out fuck tons more stone. We do have a few people with masonry on. We could make sure all of our rock knockers have it, for example. Well, what do I want? I think I might just want to mine out a big quarry. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, we want to mine out uh, places that we're going to use. But at a certain point, you just need more stuff. Oh, we got to do these bedrooms here, too. There's the build-a-bolt. I mean, this, this doesn't help because it's marble. So we don't want to dig out more marble. I propose we just mine out this huge area here. You know what we can do? This is gonna be this is gonna be a good place later on for an internal refuse pile and graveyard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna like set up a huge quarry. Well, you know what? Let's not go quite this far right now. We're gonna mine this out and we'll do we'll do them in strips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a series of doors over here and then we can put a refuse pile and a graveyard in here because eventually this will rot and cause miasma, but this way it won't spread into the fortress. And that'll prevent us from having to go up to the surface if um, if we don't have enough surface space. Yeah, sorry I'm not explaining all the keyboard shortcuts that I'm using for all the clicks. Because that's the nice thing. It's like once you start, like once you learn the keyboard shortcuts, man, is it fast. It's a lot faster than clicking on mouse menus. Whoa, so fast. So then what we're gonna do is build door. Uh, I'll turn the uh, global planning mode back on. And I'm just going to make a series of doors in here. Just to prevent the miasma from, like, flowing out. Like, right now, we're just digging this out to, as a quarry. Just making some stone for us. So this is uh, it's all phyllite so far, which is fine. We make more blocks, which you need for all kinds of different things. Cormac, have you not seen this before? Oh, baby! Oh, man, it's so good. I love our little wall. So, I mean, we have the wall right now, which is good. Although, okay, this bridge our drawbridge here isn't connected to a lever we should may as well do that now because it's kind of free there we go so um oh first let's name this bridge over here so this is the um this is the outer gate and then over here i'll even name the lever this is the lever connected to outer gate add connect bridge and then we just find outer gate over here and we do that, and we use a couple of mechanisms, and we get that wired up. So now we'll have the ability to seal this. We already have the ability to seal this one. Um, we also have the ability to seal this one. We have the ability to seal... Uh, no, I guess I don't have the ability to seal this yet, the inner fortress gate. So that'll be another one we're gonna wire down here. So add task, link a bridge, inner fortress. Boom, okay. So we have four different levels of sealing our fortress now, which is good. Did you wall in the farm? This over here? Yeah. Turns out you can wall and roof the farm over here, and it's fine. It's growing cabbages. My cabbages. Or giant Brussels sprouts. Not core air passage to the great top of the underground garbage tip to the surface. Yes, you can do that, but I might not bother. Or the thing is, maybe we won't use this as refuse things later on. It's going to be fine. And like, we can just dig out an entire level. That's gonna be all right. We got, what is this over here? Schist? All right. Part of me is like, we could just focus on the phylite, just then all the blocks will be the same material and everything will match. But at least this is going. So theoretically some blocks, which we do have some block storage here, but it's probably getting used as soon as it um, gets made. And yeah, not a lot of stone sitting around right now. Hopefully your peasants will do that. But yeah, blocks are being made and then are being carted away somewhere immediately. Oh, what's this? Taking my move. Oh, why is it possessed again? Err. All right. Monk Locky has been possessed. 
I get cranky because we'll get an artifact, but we won't get the skill after. But there's a buzzer back! Charlie Lisa is being interrupted by a buzzard. Oh, is it in the doorway here? You know what we should do? We should, uh, our squad, the Iron Bows. I'm gonna give you a kill command from a list. Ooh, Osprey as well. Oh, yeah, we have, we have some humans hanging around. They might just be buzzards. Oh my god, there's so many buzzards. Set a command on all of them. They might not be able to reach all of them. I don't know if they prioritize the ones they can reach or how that works. Our hunters should automatically hunt any that we see as well. Ooh, Monk Loki has claimed a Metalsmith's Forge. What skills do you have? Oh, Chinspig must be your kid. So Monk Loki. You are dabbling Metalsmith. Okay. So we'll probably get some sort of generic metal craft. She's got a baby in her arms, too. That's Chin's pig is her baby. You can see this, there's a little tiny dwarf there. So she's got her baby in one arm, and she's just gone bonkers. I need to go and find some metals or something now. Another scepter could be a metal scepter this time. Sure. What the carpenter make? Uh, the, oop. the carpenter made uh, a casket, which is a little foreboding. Um, are you done? Did you start your mysterious construction already? You have a pig iron bar and an applewood log. This is not going to be a very valuable artifact. Womp womp. You should sure the baby's not an ingredient. Now, if your dwarves are in a bad mood when they start a strange mood, there are two different freaky moods that you can get into. Fell moods. Um, and they both involve making things out of body parts, one of which specifically makes them go out, murder another dwarf, and then uses that dwarf's body in the fabrication of an artifact. Why her make a toy hammer for the baby? That would be really cute. Dwarven moms don't give a fuck to carry their babies into battle strapped to their armor. Yeah, they use the babies with like a shield. It's amazing. Okay, so we're getting suspensions of walls just because things are getting in the way or lack of material or various things like that. Yeah, no, uh, dwarves are pretty hardcore. It's okay though, dwarven babies are basically made of adamantine. Interrupted by a buzzer. Migrants have arrived. Okay. Hang on. It is time. <gasps> if I were to set a burrow right now, it would yoink our dwarf out of the workshop um, to go to the burrow which would call that, cause that dwarf to go berserk and start slaughtering things. It's very important that if I do enable a burrow right now for all our dwarves to run to, it includes the workshop that the dwarf is in. Otherwise, real bad things happen. Um, we do, well, we have to check. Have these levers been connected? They have, excellent. Although this one's gotta be named to the um, inner fortress over here. Okay, outer gate, inner fortress. Good. So these should have been connected at this point. Um, we can just make a burrow that is literally everything from the inner fortress gate, which is right here down, which doesn't seem like a terrible idea. So we're going to make a burrow, add a new burrow, enter to define. You can define. Oh, do you have to define one floor at a time? Can you not draw it in 3D? Oh no, hold on. Define. So it's there. It's there. Yeah, okay, there it did go. I was just a little confused about the clicking. So what I can do now is I can just like I don't know if there's a limit to the size I can define in one go. Well, okay, I need to be able to see where I am. I'm gonna stop before the cavern layer. So we'll go down to uh, 99, which will cover the flesh render plus one more. Okay. So in theory, this inner fortress burrow now covers everything 
except the uh, the uh, the great hall and the surface. That includes the metal crafter level where our strange mood is going on. Uh, the new people will come into the burrow. You're right. I can manually assign people to a burrow. Actually, I don't know how that works. If you have a global burrow and then you manually assign someone, because I could assign. I could manually assign everyone that's not one of the migrants. Maybe I just seal them out of the fortress, just for now. Maybe I don't assign anyone to the burrow, I just close this door. If any of our dwarves are stuck outside, it's going to suck for them. When's the next full moon? That's a good question. Where's my calendar? We're in the second month, so it's slate. The full moon's on the 23rd, so it's in 10 days. You know what? We can just close the doors for 10 days. I'm just going to close the outermost door. And I may, I might close this one too, just as a safety. Eh, bah. Eh, bah. There you go. Uh, oh, wait, and the outermost doors was the plan, which is down over here. And then what I can do is I can, I can open these. So as long as, once the outer one is closed and I know the migrants don't come in, we're going to be okay. So where are these migrants? They're going to be near the bottom of the list. Oh, they might not be in the list yet. You're going to see dudes show up with... Um, so these are not. These are people who were already here before. I think some of the gates have closed already. Don't get... Oh! Ho oh, oh! ho! Gunner Jurgen almost got, like, catapulted in the air uh, by this sealing up. Whoo-wee! Okay. So the outer, outer gate is, is closed. it for now. Oh, oh, the squads were already they were out hunting. That's why they were out over there. Now, I don't think any of our migrants will climb. So we're just going to keep this closed. <gasps> Monk Loki. Oh, Monk Loki. Okay. Create an artifact. Dedicate it in the name of the family ancestor, Dundee. I'm betting Dundee might be her husband. Pig Iron Door. Let's take a look at um, Monk Loki for a second here. We view you and your relationships. Dunvi is your husband. So in the name of her husband, she made a pig iron door to represent shutting him out. I don't know. All right, what is a... Oh. So this is called Thurlethil Tang Azunabu. Snakes fork the depressed vault. A pig iron door. This is a pig iron door. All craft worship is of the highest quality. On the item is an image of dwarves in pig iron. The dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the foundation of clinched girder by the lancer of blankets of the letter of notching in 137. So this is another fort that happened before, way before the start of our game. On the image, on the item is an image of a peach tree in apple wood. Okay. Dedicated to her husband. Sure. So we're waiting until the 23rd. So day's gone by. It's the 14th now. It was the second month. Slate. Yeah. That's correct, right? Yeah, 14th of Slate. Good. And we're waiting until the 23rd, because that's when the full moon is. And if there are no weird creatures, we can open the doors and let the migrants in. But yeah, it is nice that we've got we've got our wall up, and it looks pretty cool. Oh, the price! 25,000 dwarf bucks, not bad. Now, artifacts uh, can't be smashed by forgotten beasts, as far as I know. I believe they can be destroyed by um, clowns, because I think clowns can destroy anything. But other than that, I believe artifacts are indestructible. Yeah, I know, my, I, I know I've got a couple of soldiers outside. Tough. Tough. Yeah, clowns. There are certain key phrases that are used in the Dwarf Fortress community to um, mask certain spoilers. Uh, so clowns and circus and things like that. Candy. Yeah. Oh, some people are changing some of their roles. That's okay, we're just waiting. 18th. We've got five more days, and then they'll be let inside. Luckily, dwarves only have to eat um, once per month, once per season. Not a free next boxes. Yeah, well, we don't have our flesh. Oh, that's something I could do. Floor 100. This is going to be our flesh render floor. 
Um, so this is going to be our, our butchers. I mean, it's also going to be our hunters and things like that. But it's going to be our butchers, our tanners, our leather workers. Uh, it's also going to be where animal pens are. I mean, obviously non-grazing. Um, and also our nest boxes. Do we have a visual theme we might want to pursue for these guys? First, what I want to say, because a lot of times I have this sort of entrance thing, and then we have like kind of hallways that come out of it. First thing I want to do, I think, is propose that we just have like an opening area and it might be like a little asymmetrical just you know a little more organic it's whiskey and chocolate i don't know what it, it would look like it could, we could make it look like a creature or something i don't know right now i'm just i'm just doing some random clicks introducing some random shapes in here is it an eye is it a heart is it a skull a cleaver yeah i don't know Maybe the whole thing's gonna be a lot more open concept. Is it gonna look more like organs? Digestive system? Yeah, you know, this could be this could be the stomach <laughs> into like intest it doesn't make really make any sense, does it? Like why why would why would you do this? No, no. Hey look, it's a lowercase g. I don't know. What do we got? Whiskey and chocolate. I usually sleepy, thank you very much. Hey Quill, really long time YouTube viewer, but I rarely watch the streams live. Love your stuff. First video I ever saw was probably Dwarf Fortress video over a decade ago. My God. Uh, thanks for your programming goods too. Thank you very much, Usually Sleepy. Much appreciated. Ooh, pause here. Nautilus shell, a skull with the nose is the stairs. Planning on going to the circus this run? Maybe, but not very fast. I really want this port to last a long time. Bull's head with the nose ring. Okay, yeah, now that something like that could be kind of interesting, right? Because what we could do, have some sort of, I, I don't know, let's just roughly block out something here. Oops, wrong mode. You know, so that'd be kind of wider like this. I mean, this might be a little skull-like or something, or just the nose. Oh, it's not centered. That kind of does look like a nose. Um, I don't know if the ring's necessarily useful. Use dig circle. Can't remember the dig circle command exactly. Can't visit circuits before you obtain the sock. Yeah, that's the other reason we want a population growing. It does look a little like a mushroom. Now it's a little bit more skull-like, sort of the open mouth over here. A couple of eye slits. I don't know. A fork for meat? Yeah, I'm not sure. But you know what? Like maybe we maybe we don't sort of go okay. It's like it's we sort of started with a little bit of that, but then what we might do is just. Just draw it from here, not really care too much. I don't, I'm not gonna make a, a drawing a person at this point, but we have the initial idea that like the first hallway that you come in, technically when viewed from above, looks a little like a skull. And then I'm just gonna just draw out some like random kind of corridor shapes. that will go to different places for different purposes. With no particular intention after that. But it started, and at least the important thing is it's not gonna look like any other floor. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm accidentally making another and much better face. Cyberman! It's still not symmetrical. I think it is now. Okay. Maybe I'll leave that top part untouched, and here's just where we'll build. 
various collections of rooms. kind of a stockpile to serve the workshops that are going to be ringed around. I kind of like that idea. Um, there's going to be animal pens. You know, maybe what this is going to be. Yeah. Now what there isn't going to be is cooking. Let's say over here, what we'll have are, um, these are going to be where we're going to have various animal pens, uh, rooms for our, uh, nest boxes, that sort of thing. Um, we're need, uh, place where we store our like cages interesting question do the flesh reapers do they produce the cages no I think that would be up to the, the, the wood or the metal people to produce various cages but the cages with animals in them the cages where animals have been caught will get stored down here well actually maybe the empty cages will as well Although, technically, deploying the empty cages will be the responsibility. That's a fort builder thing. Because they're they're traps, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's fun. It's like, this cast system is leading itself to, like, again, really weird gameplay decisions. Almost getting, almost getting a little bit of a vertebra spine feel over here. And yeah, we didn't go out looking for it. But that's okay. Happy little spines. That's all. <laughs> and like holding up of arms, except not really. I mean, maybe we could shape these differently. Yeah, no, I think this is more like spine. So, the, I mean, the scales don't make sense, but that's okay. All right, I'm just going to plan this out for now. The cast system is leading to fun gameplay decisions. Exactly. But it is it is leading to different designs and things that we haven't done before. All right, we're just going to go and, and, and commit to this for now. At least we're going to get lots of blocks, which is going to be great. It'll be interesting to see exactly what the eyes and mouth look like. A, after it's mined out, and then B, after it's smoothed. Oh, hold on. This is uh, incorrect. Well, in a few different ways. Let me just stop this for now. Maybe it was fine. I think I was confused by this. Yeah, I was like, oh no, it's not, uh, it's it's too close. Maybe it was actually. And now it should be fine if that continues that way. Okay. Three more days. Thank you very much. Yeah, because it was the 24th. It's the 22nd. No, people can't return their kills. Deal with it. Plowing, masterpiece mugs, nice. It's too far to the left now. Oh no, you're right. Oh yeah, no, because this this was not the way I wanted it. Oh well, okay. There's still the wall in between. There, let's do this instead. There we go. Yeah, it's supposed to go up here. Go like that. goes here, goes up to, does that. Two and then a bit, and then that. Yeah, okay. There we go. Would have been more obvious, like, it's because the look of this changes slightly, because between the designation, once this square gets dug out, then you see these, 
and everything looks really weird all of a sudden. We could do interesting things with the Cobaltite, because it is blue. Ho 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 ho! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, there it is! Oh fuck, he hit the W! If I had just checked their names, Semel Rogche is one of the very, when the very early wave of our last fort, we got a were panda, and we got three people bitten and infected with were pandamism, and we marked them with a W. Yep, okay. So what we have to do is we're gonna be turning away this entire migrant wave. Now, here's what's important. Yeah, there you go. Uh, he bit. Did he bite anyone? Oh, there's too much and it's impossible to check here. Um, the important thing is that any of our soldiers get in any combat over here. And the answer seems to be no. The last time any of our soldiers or any of our people, right? Because trapper, gem setter, wood burner, bone doctor, these are all professions that are not us. Even this peasant, our peasant is marked with a little, um, a little tiki. So our soldiers fought over here, but that's when they were shooting some, some burbs. Now the question is, is Semmel still a wear panda currently? Probably. Now he might come over and kill these guys. I suppose with the migrants being so far away, I could have left, I could have gotten him in. So it's Krieg and there's one other, There's don't we have one other soldier stuck out here? Well, what I can do is I can tell the soldiers to go on the far end over here. They must be the, they're the bolters. So squad, it's the iron bows. I'm gonna tell them to move over here. Now the ones that are inside our fortress won't be able to get here. Yeah, which is fine. So I'm gonna tell my iron bows to move over here. On the opposite side of the map of where the wear panda is. So this is the wear panda. Advance time slowly. Yeah, there he is, right there. Oh, he, there, there's a peasant on the square that he's currently eating. Unpause. So he's probably gonna kill all the migrants. Ratlord's been found dead. So he's gonna kill this entire migrant wave. On the plus side, oh, now he's gonna, now he's panicking. Okay, so he's no longer wear panda. It doesn't matter, all these are getting expelled. Well. Okay, we can check them for injuries. Certainly, Semel has to be expelled. Unfortunately, I can't kill him. I can't tell my military to go and kill this guy. Um, I could kill him in creative ways. I'm gonna expel him. Now, one of the things I don't know is if he gets expelled, if he can come back to this fort. I'm hoping the answer is no. These are branded with a W, this one here. I wish I should have checked immediately. Although the problem is, okay, I got a plan. With the migrants, if they can't reach a meeting spot, sometimes they don't even enter the map. What I need to do is I have to have a meeting spot outside so the migrants can congregate somewhere when they enter the map. And then I can check them for their names. So we've ejected Semel Rogche over here. Um, and then anyone else with a wound has to be expelled. So you're wounded. You're probably not even gonna gather. This one's wounded, expelled. Doesn't matter, we're gonna shun you completely. Spelled. These guys stacked up a bunch, probably because of the migration thing. Wait, they're already. Oh, because they have to enter. That's why. There we go. Sunk has now actually been expelled. Osmanius Rex is fine. So Sunk's the only dwarf over here who is currently alive. Osmandex Rex took no injuries whatsoever. 
Semo now has to be properly expelled. There we go. Semo has been officially properly expelled. Good. I guess I can still look at you. Is anyone else still alive over here? These are all dead dwarves? Yeah, these are all mangled corpses. Is Osmandius the only person? Yeah, Semel and Osmandius. Anyone else over here? No, that's it. Uh, right. Well, I don't think he's going to leave. I don't know. Can I still um, brand him? I'm not sure that I can't. He's just going to die. I should have branded him. Because I don't think I can anymore. If we go into Dwarf Therapist... If I sort by Migration Wave and read, I think... What about what are all these guys? Where where the hell are you? Where's Abyssdefuzz? Well, maybe you haven't been found dead yet. Oh, no, you're over here. No job. Okay. Well, I guess... Okay, I can still do the meeting hall. I, I really should have it away from the front door. I guess I'll, I'll build it near where they are. Maybe on the same level over here. That'll be okay. So I'm going to make a new zone right here on the edge of the map. Meeting hall. Meeting area. So our migrants should congregate there. Maybe it's too late. Under the bridge, yeah. I could put them in the squad and tell them to move somewhere. Oh, here we go. Uh, this seems fine. Solid angle, no injuries as well. They might, these two might be okay. Just leave them out for another season. Okay, now... Are these the newest ones? What's the sorting order of this screen? I don't know. Uh, if I do Alt-Shift-R... This will sort by arrival. There you go. A shuddy's already in the base, yeah? Yeah, shuddy's in here, so you're fine. Alt shift R. Kaylin is a baby. Are you in the base? You are in the base. Okay. So it's Abyss the Fuzz and below. These are all the ones who arrived on this migration wave. Yeah, it's a profession in some bizarre way. Um, so, can I view health? I mean, I know you're fine. Does it lose the sorting? It does not. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. View thoughts and preference. Or, no. Um, health. No, you're fine. Solid angle. View health. You're okay. Keith. I think everyone might be fine now. We'll check them all, though. Oh! Okay, Keith. Keith is injured. Now, he might not have been getting bitten. Doesn't matter. Keith is being expelled. And renamed. Lem Gardner. No wounds. Multical, no wounds. Probably because you were off hunting. Watch us still get one. True is fine. Ozymandias, we believed, was fine. I'll check on this view, just in case we see something different. Nope, seems fine. Meb. Seems fine. Malakarid. Also seems fine. And Toad John. Is exhausted. 
Diagnosis required. You might have gotten injured. I'm not taking any risks. Sorry, you have an old injury. Well, and that's the thing. Some of them might be, you know, it doesn't matter. We don't trust it, man. I'm not gonna let COVID in here. What the hell? Although, I guess those are old injuries, maybe? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Um, can I? How do I customize you? Can I, I can do it from here, can I? Oh, here. Duh. Um, nickname. And annoyingly, yeah, you can't back up. Don't actually know that you're a were creature. Don't care. And who's the other one? Keith. Go right over here. Okay, unconscious. Yeah, I don't care. Status. Customize. There's gonna be someone with a W in your username, and I'm gonna be like, oh my god, they're a were creature. Pre existing conditions, exactly. Uh, so, general, or where's it? Preference. Spell, enter. Code, spell, enter. Okay. They have been expellated. We can go and uh, pull our levers and let everyone in now. Fingers crossed that that covered everything. We're not using any cheat mode, so we don't know for sure anymore. Hopefully no one's standing in the bridge. Pull the lever. Nuke the migrants from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. <laughs> Imagine ensuring for rarism. <laughs> Interrupted by engraver. Why is engraver fight? Oh, did you go crazy? Oh, is Semmel still fighting? Wait, hold on. Because you got expelled, can I kill you now? Because they're expelled, they're on the killable list. I mean, they're going to be leaving the map, so they won't be around for very long. Oh, shit. Oh, we got him. Okay, Toad has been killed. He might have been innocent this whole time. But Semmel, who was definitely, definitely a were panda, definitely is dead. Oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> Kill dwarves. Sounds like a bad idea since they're fighting in this wounded cube. Um, as long as they're not in were beast creature, they can't uh, they can't be infected. So when the were panda is in dwarf form, it's totally fine to fight with them. I'm assuming these people have left the map now, which is why we can't reach them. Yeah. Still have the kill command, though, which is a little bit weird. Kind of tempted to, like, seal the outer gate. Now, the problem with sealing the outer gate is that if a wagon, like, uh, if traders come, they'll just bypass the site. It's like, give me a minute. I'll open the gate for you. I mean, maybe we don't really need to trade anymore. Maybe we're self-sufficient. At some point, we will. I don't know if we're there yet. Well, we're planning, getting plenty of stone, so that's good. Can't bury the panda dwarves in the normal graveyard. Gotta make a new one for the evil ones. <laughs> actually, that's an interesting point. We don't have, we don't actually have coffins for them. We don't have a graveyard. Well, actually, I guess technically we have a graveyard over here. We don't have a burial. I'm wondering, they probably become ghosts if they're not buried. I guess that's the next thing. I feel like it should be like near the life minder uh, stage. This is our... And this is our great hall and everything. I think the life minders, I think life and death is really what they do. So I think the burial halls is going to be them. Oh, this is all done here. Hang on. Get some doors. We'll mark uh, some of these as internal so that the rooms will span more than one thing. It'll look really cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, I suppose I could still make one of these, like, the Captain of the Guard thing. We're talking about a library, but maybe it will end up being somewhere else. Or I'll just dig out the Captain of the Guard thing now. Um, I wonder if I can draw an axe. 
axe and shield? Not really. I don't know if that's viable for me. Probably not. I think that's going to be beyond what I can do. might be their office, and I don't think it needs to be quite this big. But like, vaguely, like a kite shield shape for the office. And then we'll just have a hallway that like... I don't think any of this is going to be there, but at least, you know, it was something to start with. One dining room. I don't think he's going to need something quite as fancy as this. One dining room over here. some walls over here, which won't quite match because we're not using marble. I suppose I could enable some marble to do this, but... Little well, Captain of the Guard kind of vibe. Almost maybe an upside down axe? I don't know. You take the wear panda's head hanging in the gate to prevent other wear pandas. We could put it on a pedestal in the... Uh, the in the museum. Although then it would rot. If we wait for it to rot and just become a skull, then we could make a totem out of it and then put it somewhere. That would be kind of cool. All this is going to have to get smoothed. But I don't want to overload our stone knockers right now. We'll come back later. Everyone's in a pretty good mood. Actually, one one dwarf is really happy right now. Um, I don't know if there's a way inside a dwarf fortress to find out, like, to sort the dwarves by happiness. But we can just do that here. Um, happiness. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. Monkey is the one... Monk Loki, not monkey, is the one who is the happiest. Ah. I wonder if she's happy because she made a artifact. Relieved after bringing somebody to rest in bed. Wait, was someone else injured? Sod buzzer's dead body, worried unable to pray to a god. Yeah, we don't have a temple. That is going to start being a thing. You know what? Just just for laziness right now, I'm going to make a new zone. And I'm going to share the same zone over here. Uh, because that totally works. Make a new zone. Meeting area, location. We're going to add a new temple to no specific deity. So it's currently called the Hawk of Idols. I'm going to restrict it to only things. I don't know if I like that name. But maybe we'll still go random. Outrageous Sanctum! Done! The Outrageous Sanctum. I love it. Embalm it and display it in the Great Hall. I like that. How many dwarves we have now? Okay, 77. I believe at 80 is when you can start getting sieges. Okay. Um... Looks, I think all our fortifications got put into place. So now what we have to do is we have to go into designate mode, remove construction. Ah, the blinking hurts. And I have to remove the bits of temporary flooring we put in. Which luckily the flooring will be in green because otherwise it looks the same as the top of the, the roof or the top of the walls. Ah, blinking is hard. There, 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 there. What we could have done for this, actually, in hindsight, um, is I could have changed the um, the auto construction rules or the construction helper, whatever it's called, planning mode, um, to only use wooden blocks while I put the little flooring pieces, because then they would look that much more different and be easier to tell. Okay, I think that's 
all the temporary flooring has been designated to be removed. Well, actually, here's the thing. This is actually sealed in. But it's still not the look we're going for. Yeah, the temp flooring was in there so that we could do our diagonal uh, fortifications. So we could fill in our corners. Here's all done. Yep, good. Excellent. <clears throat> Missed one bottom left. Well, let's see. We'll wait until these jobs get done and it'll be easier to spot. This one top right. The stair. Oh, what was something slapped on the surface? What? Did I lose some support somewhere? Oh shit! This fortification here does, indeed has no supports. Wait. Oh shit! Abyss the fuzz <laughs> survived the uh, the wear pandering. Um, only to fall. Oh, he only. Hurt. Oh, that's solid angle. Oh, we got a few injuries. Solid angle is fighting. No. Fell down, left leg, deflected, trouser, mitten, bruising. Okay, a little bit of bruising, not so bad. Do we have a hospital? Yes, we do have a hospital. Yeah, so it's this bit of fortification here just fell. Because I had, I had two floors, which I didn't need. Because what's going to happen? That's going to go there which will hold up the fortification. And then I'll just put this floor back right over there. Uh, I guess turn off box select. So we just click, click, click. This will also enable me to see if I missed anything. Oh, that's gonna be removed. That's the spot there. Okay. So yeah, this area here is actually more than we need, but man. Oh, some of these are made out of uh, cobaltite, so they're blue. Now this is gonna be a sealed door. I guess things can, can things climb the bridge? I don't, uh, three, the bridge is three long. I don't know if it counts as being three high when it's up. I don't think so because you can build like, you can build a bridge that's 10 units long and still flip it up in an, a cavern, a tunnel that's only one Z level high. So I don't think the bridges have a height. I suppose I could, I could dig out, I could dig something out underneath the bridge. So when it's up, there's a little bit of a moat and a lip so that things can't climb up there. I don't know if bridges are climbable or not. They might be. Then I guess, actually, the thing to do with the bridge is to have a walkway in front of it. Ooh, that I kind of like. First of all, let's get this tree out of the way. I'm going to chop that. We're going to make it so that there's a walkway just above the bridge, cutting that off. Bottom right fortification that can't be built. Oh, this one here. I have a... Did we fuck up our order? Yeah, how that happen? You, go away. I guess I missed uh, one of the floors before. Okay. And yeah, what we're going to do with the trees, we're going to go and chop them, all the ones next to the wall, and then what we're going to do is we're going to build floor. Well, we'll use road, because road is actually much cheaper and faster to build. Um, we'll use road 
um, around here. The difference is floor can be built like overhanging an empty space. Uh, road has to be built on a surface, but yeah. That'll be the next bit. Prevent trees from being nearby so people can't climb the trees and then jump across. I, I had trained some war dogs and the plan is still to train more. Okay, don't construct floor. There we go. And yeah, over here. And then we'll be able to build the floor here after. Yeah, actually, so what I'm going to do is um, designate remove construction. I'm going to remove this bit and this bit of fortification. I think we'll build it back later. But what we'll do is we'll build a row floor here because this is the floor that's going to overhang and prevent people from climbing. I will temporarily build a floor here and here uh, so I can fortify here and here remove the floor, then fortify here. I don't know. Something. I'm not sure. Oh my god, we're nearly four hours into the stream. The road is just compacted dirt that won't grow things. The floor is actual stone blocks. Uh, you can build... You're talking about a dirt floor. There's also... You can do a paved, uh, paved road. Sorry. You can do a dirt road and you can do a paved road. Dirt roads are annoying because they have to be repaired from time to time. So, like, if I go build, and it's lowercase o for a paved road, do maybe like three tiles wide and it'll be built with blocks I guess I might uh, do this road rectangle painting mode on the paved roads. It's a little odd. Vaguely annoying. I don't know how much of a distance out from the corners we're going to want necessarily everywhere. plop some things down and then see how it looks and we can tweak things. It's a little annoying. So, like, the roads are, like, bridges. So I can't go and, like, I can't really paint individual tiles the same way. I mean, I guess I can make individual road chunks. Probably not good for performance, though. And these aren't even the biggest roads I could build. Yeah, so let me cancel you, you. Actually, let me cancel these as well. Bring it up to this edge here. So the idea with this is just to prevent plants from growing underneath it. Okay, we'll start with this and then we'll fill in more. And then um, ultimately as well, the build road as long as possible. Oh yeah, we gotta get these trees out of the way, but... The right side, you place a road over the tower. Oh yeah. I think it will carve around it. And it might have been, it sort of might have been how we wanted it, but I don't know. Now this is gonna eat a bunch more blocks. Yeah, actually I don't even know if we wanted this far out. No, it's probably fine. It will look weird when we select some things later on. Oh, and I really should have standardized over stone. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. DF is a drug, indeed. Minecraft thing, get bucks lava and fill your moat around your base. I mean, magma pumping potentially something we will do long term, yeah. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna tree cutting down this way. So we're definitely gonna want those out of the way. Because um, this area is not super tree dense. There are a lot of trees, um, but if you're in an area that has a lot of trees and a lot of hills, you can end up with uh, a possibility where 
um, caravan wagons can't reach you. So one thing you can do with roads is you make it areas where trees can't grow, and it guarantees that your caravans will be able to reach you at least along the road, if nothing else. Um, but then, yeah, also alongside your walls, you can put down walls, or, or roads, or floor, either way, to stop trees from growing. Football murdered. Just flood the world with lava. Yeah. I'm going to pump in, just get a few carts and some magma to surface for smelters. Oh, that's neat. So you just make a little a little plop. No, yeah, I guess we just played right through any possibility of multiplayer. I don't think most people are going to complain about more Dwarf Fortress, though. You have Yellowstone for the main road. If we had gold, we could literally have a gold, you know, a yellow brick road, a golden road. Like, the rough phylite on the map with this tile set is yellowish, uh, but it leads to gray blocks. I think I've got Gabbro and Phylite here, one slightly darker than the other, and then random bits of Cobaltite. Um, there'll also be some color variation on the road itself if any leaves fall on it. But yeah, that's going to look quite good. Let's get back to the stone knocker bedrooms over here. Uh, I just realized this is not going to... Do this. And do that. There we go. So these individual metal trims will start to work. Gotta watch those diagonals. beds in here. And different places. Some want them in the corner. Some want them a little more in the middle of a room. Okay, I think that's a bed for each one. Um... Now, sometimes you can get sneaky wear creatures as well. We really should have um, some guard animals to spot things. Although, there's enough traffic coming through this door here that, generally speaking, we're going to spot things anyway. We could tie up some animals out here to act as spotters. Or, if nothing else, in some of the hallways. Why is the bed placement so haphazard? Because, because the bedrooms are all different. So the bed placement will be different as well. Different dwarves have different preferences. Some believe in uh, feng shui and some don't. Or something, I don't know. Oh, um, on my life tender's uh, floor over here, we also, this is where we're gonna build a big, um, big dormitory. Maybe I'll build it just opposite over here. It's for our peasants. I don't want to do this. I do want, like... Because they're not going to have assigned bedrooms. Because when they get upgraded to a cast, then I'll assign them a bedroom in the right area. I want a large dormitory with some sort of plan and structure. Ah. Let me record.
Discord. Build a wear COVID hotel, isolate new arrivals. Yeah, I guess what I'd need is an area with a burrow and all new arrivals get allocated to that burrow, but it's hard to like to, to filter the list properly. Most of the plan is just we shut the doors, same as what we did last time. We're gonna just shut the door to our fortress when um, the migrants arrive, and we're gonna wait until the full moon, and then if no one turns into a wear creature, then we open the door. If some of our dwarves get caught outside, things could be worse. Oh yeah, we're gonna do a graveyard too, right? Underneath the life miners, is that the idea? I think that's the idea. I think we're gonna leave two levels here. Ah. What? What game? What? Wait, what? Why is my site inaccessible? Why can't wagons... So wagons can reach here. So this flows out from, from the depot, right? So from the depot, a wagon can reach all the way over here. But that's it. Is it the boulder? Now this way is too narrow, admittedly. This building's potentially gonna go. Is that the boulder getting in the way? I mean, trees are usually the issue. There's no trees indoors here. But no, you, wagons can move over stone blocks that are just sitting around. Yeah, I'm gonna build a road to the edge, but that's not the problem. The problem is right here. Right? It's not like they can get to here and then there's some fucking trees in the way. It It is literally the boulder, isn't it? The boulder? Huh. If it's not a mine boulder to block, so is, Hmm. Should I just dump it? Boulder's not a stone block. Well, it's not a block, but here... Okay, question. Look, okay. So these stone here... Oh, it's just diorite. So... And shit. So, what do we do? Do we mine a boulder? Or do I just dump it? Oh, that's chopped trees. Wait, I can't... I can't dump it. I can't mine it. Smooth it? I've played Dwarf Fortress for a really long time. I've never run into this, so let's look like I can smooth it. And then what, what can I get rid of it after? Dwarf Fortress Boulder. The boulder is confused by the boulder. Boulder's a map tile cures randomly across the surface of the world. Represents fragments of the substrate stone layer. Uh-huh. Removal. Aside from serving no utility whatsoever in fortress mode, they can be the movement of wagons. Remove a boulder, designate smooth, designate the boulder, engraver will turn this boulder into a smooth floor. So it's just protruding out of the ground and you just smooth it down. Huh. How odd. All right, much to share. We should really take a look at what's going on in the world. Um, that's for a little bit of leather. I don't know how much we can afford. Cloth, certainly. There's, there's, there's starting to be less and less things, fewer and fewer things we need to ask. Oh yeah, we gotta do our flooding. Oh, these are humans. Yeah, we don't really care that much about what they have to bring anyway. I mean, I could ask for more surface seeds, but we only grow in cabbages. It's the only thing we care about. A little bit of liquid, some cheeses. Yeah, I don't really care. 
Taters? What's Taters? All right, so if we look at the news of the world, so if we, it's a little annoying because it doesn't just tell you what the news is. Oh. If you mouse over, oh, if you mouse over your own place, is that how you find out some of the news articles? I'm mousing over here. In summer, some guy became Lord of the Intense Councils. Someone replaced someone else. An army of Abe Clear Griffins marched on Doomsnarl. Now, all the red you see around here, this represents marching armies. Um, I think you'll also see, you'll also see, uh, I think this red A over here is maybe a rumor of an artifact. No, oh, capital A, sorry, capital A is marching armies. Lowercase a is news of an artifact, and then there's another one as well. I mean, you can always go just to like the artifact screen over here. This is all the artifacts we're sort of vaguely aware of. So you can use this to plan places where you might raid and, and stuff like that. Anyway, the boulder's been smoothed now. There you go, and we got a little bit of floor left over. All right, smooth limestone. So now if we check, well, there you go. Holy cow. Maybe I did run into a boulder thing once. I'm not having a vague memory of it. Yeah, because the field is littered with them. The boulder is defeated. If, if you don't understand what I'm doing, this, is, this avatar references. Um, there's still some trees in the way here. I did tell you to cut down all these trees, right? Because you just haven't gotten around to that one yet. That is a tree. Birch trunk. Yep. Pleased to be chopping that tree. Alright, so you're leaving. Uh, if we have... Oh yeah, so again, what I'll do is I will send all the bins that have some clothing up here. And we'll just sell worn shit. Plus the mugs. And eventually, we'll have some blocks of there. Wow, that mining is happening fast. Good. Okay, I will designate all this area to be smoothed, which will keep our stone knockers kind of busy, but that's going to be okay. And then they'll probably see some, uh, some engraving later on. I don't know if I'll be able to mark this entire area as a uh, dormitory, but we're sure as hell going to try. Bed. Record. Click, click, click. So I'm trying to give them a little bit of privacy, despite the fact that it's a dormitory, you know? So they have little alcoves. You could always designate a couple of different de dormitories or more in the end. Okay. Build doors. Uh, so, table, chair, bed, corner, middle of the room. Let's go corner for the bed. Uh, you'll probably want some cabinets. You're over here, sort of. It's going to look like a closet. That's going to be okay. And then we'll have a little dining room for you. Just enough for like four. A little modest dining room. And I'm betting you're going to want a weapon rack and an armor stand. And you'll probably want, I'm betting, a couple of containers as well. We'll put those in the bedroom as well. There we go. Oops. Okay. That's for the captain of the guard. And then, over here... Um, office over here. Table. Chair. Wank your dining room. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two beds in here. It'll just look like a double wide bed. It doesn't actually make any sense or work that way at all, but Good. 
I don't know if you have jobs for that. I guess the place to check would be the stone knockers screen. Check the mason's workshop. And we don't currently. Armor stand on repeat. Weapon rack on repeat. Just check. We've got some limitings on there. There you go. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. In before creature disaster. Well, we haven't got a forgotten beast yet. We haven't had any sort of giants or anything visiting us either. It's actually been pretty decent. All right, check four above here. Yeah, that's looking good. So I'm gonna do this. Build this You know what? I'm just gonna build it straight out like this. It's fortification. There we go. It's gonna be okay. One more fortification right here in this corner to seal everything up properly. And then what we do... Oh, I guess there's a mismatch over... You know what? I should just keep the floor there. Which way do I prefer? I think I prefer this. Yeah. I'm going to remove those and rebuild the floor instead. I think I like that look better. Maybe I won't do an inner wall. I mean, theoretically, something can come inside and then start climbing the walls and be a pain. It's pretty unlikely that that's an issue. And remove the floor and build the missing fortification on the bottom right as well. Oh, yeah, over here. Right, so, build construct. This fortification here, that's, that's that piece there. We build this one, then we remove this floor and build the fortification there afterwards. Okay. Get that all sealed in. Oh, hang on. I'm building a fortification here instead of what I want. Capital F. Fortification. Okay, there. Now, none of the roads have been built yet. I just have this blinky blinky nonsense. I guess our architects are busy. Alright. Masterpiece bed. Nice. We need a lot of beds. Um, which ones are wood floor? Over here. Let's make sure there's lots of jobs for the beds in here. And they should have a limit in here as well. There we go. <laughs> oh, there you go. The first bit of road. So it stops blinking once the road is built. It stops blinking. So hopefully three tiles wide is enough uh, to prevent any uh, any rogue trees, any enemy trees. What's the season? Early summer. Okay. All right, because the humans come in summer. So we've got to wait until the fall for the next one. For the Dwarven Caravan. We should have a lot of fancy mugs to trade with them. You know what we're going to do right now? Um, we don't really have a cloth industry. Oh, yeah, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Build. Mechanism. I want to do this and maybe accidentally flood the fortress before we leave. Get that in there. Excellent. Oh, wait, I'm still in the planning mode, so I can't actually confirm that I've got everything. Um, build. Mechanism. Screw. Turn off the global pump planning mode. There you go. Quartzite block. Enormous apricot screw. Hazelwood pipe section. Done. Okay. Ah, in before we flood the entire goddamn fortress. Flood, here we come. We're gonna find out. I'm gonna come install this. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's the baby. Who gave birth? Hasten. All right. I thought it was going to be someone in the strange mood. I was so excited. Why are we flooding the fortress? We better not be. The door does stop flooding, right? I mean, if there's a little water, it's all going to go down here. and we can, we can drain it out. The bright side is we can't possibly flood above. So it's going to be okay. We can't. We're not going to flood upwards. Probably, maybe. 
is it, I guess architecture is probably a fort builder job. In the thing is, architecture is so weird, it doesn't feel like a real skill. I'm actually just tempted. I'm just going to turn architecture on for everyone. It's like... It's such a nothing skill. I think it affects the final quality of, like... Workshops? Is that a thing? I don't know if thing. Can't flood upward? Not with that attitude. <laughs> Depends on water pressure. Well, at least I, I do think I understand the water pressure. The, um, water pressure in Dwarf Fortress will never cause water to flow upwards. No matter how aggressively you pump, it will never rise above the level. The, the water cubes basically have, like, they, they have a Z level that they know is their uppermost level, and that's as far as I will ever go. Alright, more of the road segments are being put down. That's gonna be good. Architect isn't a real skill. Guy who lives in a building. Metan Dwarf Fortress. Obviously, in real life, very important. Dwarves are getting each other's way. We're waiting for an architect to come down here and plan the super screw pump. We need to get we need to get council permission, basically, for our screw pump here. Interrupted by buzzard. Squads, kill list. Wow, there's a lot of capybaras around. Kill all buzzards. Go, war on birds. Do you have a building permit for that? Our FPS has been great all stream, though. It's actually been quite amazing. But yeah, the farming, the reason I just thought of farming is because I actually, I was thinking before the Dwarven Caravan comes, I could maybe get everyone to strip off their old clothes and, you know, put on, make sure they're wearing the new one, then we can sell the old clothes. But we don't have a clothing industry going yet properly, which is why we need the farming setup. I think our food situation's been great. Thousand drink. Still crazy amounts of plants. I think, like, just from plants we've picked up on the surface. And we do have our cabbages, right? So I, our dwarves are probably pretty uh, pretty flatulent, I would think, from eating so much cabbage. It's like they're, they're dwarves powered by sauerkraut and beer, basically. I wonder if I went to, uh, to our stocks and checked our drinks. We have bought a lot of drinks in the past and, and did things from like surface booze, but I'm waiting to see like hundreds of like cabbage wine or something. I don't see any cabbage booze. Hmm. There's various surface crops. So we haven't been hunted, haunted at all, huh? That was interesting. So these guys, even though they were not buried, because they were not members of our fortress? Well, no, they were, because they were migrants. Surely they're going to start haunting us. Surely. I'm going to go ahead. How many How many dead dwarves do we have here? Four, six, eight, ten. Well, one's already entombed. But. So let's make um, rock slab. We'll make nine of them. And we'll be ready to engrave them. Oh, more migrants are here. Good news, everyone. Okay, here's the plan. I will go and quickly set everyone to the inner fortress burrow, just to force all the dwarves to start moving inside as quickly as possible. Um, but then I will close the door. I realize that the migrants are still going to be trying to get into the burrow, but hopefully they'll get locked out before they get in. Got a few around. I'm checking their names, yeah. Well, there's that too. Um, I'll shift R. It was R, wasn't it? Yeah, no, a new arrival. See, there you go. So, Litast is new. So, has they come onto the map? I don't know. Um, we'll go to his unit. And watch them. Okay, so these X's over here. This is the first one. Okay, I'm gonna pull the levers now. I'm gonna pull all of them just in case they get in one. This does increase the chance that I kill someone with my drawbridge. Some of you may die. Well, I guess outer gate. Outer gate and inner gate really is all I need to really pull. 
surface gate. We don't need the entrance hall. We'll cancel that. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this one and this one, just in case they happen to make it through the first outer one. Oh, puppy, make it through. Okay. Oh, who the fuck? Cancel the hunt buzzards. I don't, oh, I don't think, hang on. I'm going to cancel the military completely. Because they might not have been going. There's the first migrant. Pull the lever, Kronk! All right, we got a migrant in. We got two migrants in. What the fudge? All right, pull all the levers. Someone's just about to pull one, finally. God damn it. Three. Four. Five. Is there something weird at the burrow? They're all the way in. Is the burrow preventing them? That shouldn't be. Well, no fucking reason now. Okay, now this one's finally closed. Okay. Closing this one doesn't matter anymore. But we can still keep the next ones closed to prevent those guys from getting in. At least they'll be like segmented quarantines. Well, you know what? I'll keep them closed anyway. So what, when are we? 257, or so Malachite, sorry. Um, so, the 17th, we only have to wait five days. The 17th of Malachite is the next full moon. Oh, you're attacking the buzzer. What's taking so long to pull these levers? Oh, I have this command in here twice, which is not right. I mean, everyone's got pull lever as a job, right? Levers, 57. Well, actually, no. Which is a little bit surprising, but mostly yes. Does one of these sub rolls not have pull lever on them? Because they should all have. Okay, the nobles didn't. Hang on. I think I hit the wrong one. That was a vehicle. It's lever operation. Lever operation. Lever. Lever. Or lever if you prefer. Well, the soldiers don't have anything on, but you know what? And the peasants definitely did, because clearly... That was weird. But I mean, we had like 57 dwarves assigned to it. So I don't know... Who this? Human merchant. Okay. No. You're about to be trapped in here. Okay. Sealed. 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 This one's still not closed. Oh, I didn't. I didn't actually give a pull command there. I guess maybe I. I was like, oh, it won't be needed. But I'm gonna do it now too because if there is something, I want to be able to control. I'm just worried. Did anyone die? Yeah, oh, no! Oh no! Oh, we killed some dwarves. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe only one! Targnar! Yeah, we could lock one where, or you, um, it, the classic thing is a uh, vampire. Because vampires don't need to eat, drink, or sleep. So you capture a vampire, you put him in, in a locked room with all the levers. This is fine. What's the 17th, yeah? 17th of Malachite. Okay. One more day. We killed one dwarf to make sure we wouldn't lose any dwarves. 
17th. I believe that anything that was a were-creature would have now triggered. Okay. Now, the, the placement of these levers here is, was always intended to be temporary, and so this actually might be a good time to, like, remove these. Well, we'll, we'll pull the levers first. But maybe? All right. Pull everything. Now watch more dwarves die as the bridges come down. I don't think they stand under where the bridges spawn. A ma oh, masterworks have been lost. So something just got flattened somewhere for some reason. Things were placed on the ground underneath where the bridges came down. Now, so what might be better and safer instead of this? Well, I think I still like the, the multiple levels because if something sneaks by. But one thing we can do... Well, first of all, next time it happens... Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to like minimize how many jobs are on the surface. It just happened to be a really bad time. Um, because it was a time when we had a bunch of dwarves outside building the, uh, the roads. And also dwarves picking up the, um, the wood that was out here. Um, basically, I'm going to try to avoid having any real reason for dwarves to be on the surface, generally speaking. Um, surface house with migrant meeting hall. It, would, it doesn't solve the problem. Because here's the thing. We got this meeting hall over here. But the migrants, we can't force the migrants to go into any particular meeting hall. They just pick one. I don't know if there's any way to control the flow. So I can put shit all over the surface. But unless I locked them to the burrow, which is kind of annoying. And maybe, and maybe that'll be the thing. So... Again, though, the burrow shit is a little bit annoying because you go here, you're like, um, or wherever my burrows are. There you go. Outer, the great entrance hall. Good. I want to limit the people there. So, you know, we've got this, but then when you try to assign people to a burrow, um, where was it? Was it not here? But the, you can pick people from a list, but it's actually kind of frustrating. You need immigration off. We need to be able to sell a burrow to, like, immigrants or a new zone. It's, it is kind of odd that, like, there's so many zones that exist, right? But there's not a zone for the migrants specifically. Yeah, exactly. Can you assign a burrow to the surface, assign new migrants to the surface? Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to say, is it's really annoying. So, we'll create a new burrow, right? I'll define this burrow here. Cool. All right. We've got it. It's defined. Lovely. Um... So now I can add citizens to the borough. Now, how do I find the ones from the new migration wave? Does this sort? Okay, this does use let me do the DF hack thing for sort for, sorting, although only because I have DF hack, and then I could sort of try to look at people. You know, maybe I could I could force a profession, and but it's like the professions are so clipped, it's almost impossible to see which ones they are because the names are so long right like uh animal akarit i can't see his profession because i could do something like i go into dwarf therapist filter by migration wave give them a cup custom profession this. but yet it's it's basically impossible for me to tell unless i turn off i could turn off the the i could turn off the automatic auto nick and then sort by when they joined the fortress find everyone without a nickname and assign them to this burrow. And then leave them there. That would be the thing to do. It's kind of annoying. Can't you assign a class to immigration control them this way? No. Right? Because I can go using Dwarf Therapist. And that's the problem. We're still using external tools, right? We're using combination DF hack and Dwarf Therapist to do this. In Dwarf Therapist, I can sort by migration wave. And I could see them here, and I could give them a custom profession, but then I can't actually restrict them anywhere based on a custom profession. Um, I could give them a stupid job. Well, that doesn't work. So I say I could turn off pump operating for everyone, turn on pump operating just for these new migrants, and have a bunch of pumps somewhere like off in the corner of the map for them to just go and like do uselessly but if they're hungry or whatever and actually when they come in the map so migrants don't work right away they come in the map they've got that x they make their way to a meeting hall and then they become a, a normal member of the society but despite the fact that i had a meeting hall on the surface i had a meeting hall over here the migrants didn't come here the migrants were making their way inside the base 
to one of the other meeting halls we have. Sign in profession with letter, sort by profession. Because DF hack might have a sort by profession. Again, it's kind of annoying that it's not built into the game. Oh. Yeah, delete this burrow. The other thing you can do is just seal all your dwarves inside. Which is kind of what I want to do. And is what I did with my, my fortress, my personal fortress. What we could do here is we can just tell our dwarves to be part of the... Um, the inner fort uh, burrow. Once they're all inside, close this door. And just leave it closed. When there's a caravan that comes, they can come in, start to unload their goods over here in the Great Hall. Then a contemporary uh, uh, bring down the gate, unburrow all my dwarves. They can come out here, do a little bit of trade, and then I can send them back inside. And that's probably the better way to do it. It does mean we don't get the like cool guards on the outside, though. Which, the guards permanently guarding the outside isn't terribly useful, but it's super cool, and therefore I want to do it. Uh, so now, actually, speaking of, I can remove this bit. Also, how's this? Screw pump is in place! Alright, let's do it. We're going to start the pump, and I'm going to just turn pump operating on for everyone right now, because I just want to like make it happen as quick as possible. Oh, and lock this above door. Or forbid packet passage over here. Just to make sure no one comes and opens this door and ruins everything. Okay. <clears throat> Hang on a sec. Just, uh... Just, just, just doing a little say. Just... It's actually not a problem. Again, it can't flood our actual fort. It could be annoying because it could flood the stairway going down. In which case, we would just have to pump that out later on. Barracks by the entrance of the fortress. Well, I have a barracks by the entrance to the fortress. That doesn't help us at all, uh, Sarmatian. The issue is, we want what we want to do is we want to quarantine our migrants, so if any of them are were creatures, they're not in our base when they transform for the first month. And it turns out that's really annoying. What you could do, like, you can just have... As long as you have your... The only reason it's annoying is because I don't want to seal the fortress up because it means it fucks up the trade. Although, at this point, do I even need any trade? Maybe we should just keep the outer doors closed all the time. I think if merchants showed up, the merchants do show up and stick around. No, or do they instantly bypass? I think the merchants, I think the wagons might instantly bypass, but the merchants themselves might stick around waiting for, um, it, giving you a little bit of time to maybe build a trade depot or open the gate to your trade depot. You lose the wagons regardless, though, which isn't ideal because you don't have as much stuff. How stairs going from the inner fort to the walls? I mean, that's, that still doesn't solve any of the problems. Because what I want to do is I want to have the trade depot accessible to the outside world all the time, and nothing else. Which is sort of the idea with the great entrance hall. Or, I mean, I could just stick a trade depot outside here. We could, uh, and that's something I considered, and actually that might be the easiest thing. I could have a little building out here that is just a trade depot, and then a ramp or stairs or something that leads downstairs. And then, you know, when the trade comes, the, the merchants are gonna be able to come to this depot right away. And then I pull a switch to allow my dwarves to just access this area for a little while or, or some damn thing. But I really like the idea of them coming down to this area here to trade, because I think it's quite cool for them to bring their wagons into this great hall. And that's the only reason. It's just because I have this aesthetic idea in my head, right? I think it's really cool for them to bring the wagon into this great hall over here um, and see all the wonder. Um, because otherwise, I just close this gate. And then we're in great. Keep the troops patrolling over here in case there's random critters that come by. Again, I don't think I need anything from trade. I'm actually tempted to just close the door outright. Um, and migrants can still show up, which will still happen. Um... Oh, we're actually over 80, which means we can get raided now. Ooh, that's very exciting. Oh, shit. I gotta take a look at what's going on down here. Hey, there we go. So the pumping is starting. Not leaking out, eh? Nope, nope, we're good. Um, if I hit uh, Control W, there we go. We can see the water depth. So 7 is the deepest water you can have in Dwarf, Dwarf, Dwarf Fortress. So it's flowing into the rest of the room over here. I like to hide the water depth for a couple of reasons. One, this looks nicer. And two, especially when you start pumping out an area like this, then you got this constant water flow that looks really dumb. Okay, I think I can stop pumping now. 
because there'll be enough water to reach the whole room. In fact, I probably could have stopped a little while ago. All right. So now we hide this again. So we have a little bit of water over here. So two, three, that sort of thing. This will dry out over time. But we have that dusting of mud, which means we can farm here. I think as long as it's under four, dwarves can walk in this area perfectly fine. Oh, you know what I can do to dump the excess water? Is I can just deconstruct a screw pump. And that'll dump the extra water. There is a risk that the water flowing out will carry my dwarf out into the deep water. And they'll drown. Which would be poor. Not only evaporate it was level one. That might be the case, in which case I might have let too much water in here. I don't know. Can afford to lose one dwarf for farming. There you go. You know what? That's the right attitude. Here, let's just deconstruct this pump. That's the right attitude. Some of you may die, but that's the price I'm willing to pay. What is this thing? An ulm. Okay. An ulm swim? Oops. Just knocked one of my keys off here. There you go. Three. I'm not paused, no. Okay, so at some point someone will come in. Capybaras are fighting? Is this hunting? Oh, you're attacking the human. Wait, what? Oh, out here. We have wild capybara attacking human. Maybe the humans probably started it. Stupid humans. Oh my god, is it 4.30? Jeez, I gotta stop the stream. There's just so much going on right now. Late summer. Here's what I propose. We do one more round of trading with the dwarves, and then we seal the front door. I think I like that idea. Toot, toot, toot. Hold on. I, this might be... I think there used to be more threes here. Um, dwarf fortress evaporation. How does it work? The thing I want to do is get a... Uh, I want to do a water fill. Oh, well, we're going to deconstruct this anyway, but... Evaporation. Oh, uh, it is only when it's a one. Yeah. So if I'd filled it a little less, it would have evaporated naturally. Pause. We're going to go... One frame at a time. Who is this? Pikmin! Ga Mega Master! Uh, who is, was in the chat earlier. I don't know if you still are. All right. And you are still... Are you still our mayor? No! You're no longer the mayor. SMZ uh, replaced you as mayor. That happens. All right, I'm gonna go one frame at a time. How long does it take? It'd be nice to get a progress bar. Okay. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Okay, you're still working on it. Oh, okay, here comes the water. Just be ready to dodge it. It's not too deep. It shouldn't be too strong coming through. Is the hope. I didn't realize you deconstruct sort of one block at a time. There we go. It's deconstructed. Now get out of there. What are you doing now? You're still in destroy building. It looks kind of destroyed to me, but... Oh, there's a little water under your feet. There's some water under your feet! Get out! I wonder if I just stop removal. If he'd leave. Because it's clearly flowing out now. Oh, then it's going to try to rebuild it. And is that what you're going to do? No, you're going to go eat. Yeah, go eat. There you go. There you go. Oh, and bits, bits of the screw pump just got washed out into the water. In the block. It's all getting displaced. But there you go. This is flowing out now. Oh, excellent. We didn't even kill everyone. Just, oh, someone might come down. Well, actually, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But someone might come down here and try to pick up that stuff. I'm just going to lock this door for a little bit. There you go. So this is, should be flowing out. Plus, everywhere it says one, it is going to do a little bit. The Etten! Siba! Fecacianina! It's, you sound Italian. Ciba Fecacianina! Uh, Ilimi... Camela has come. You got to do the hand motions. A giant humanoid monster with two heads. There we go. We're going to get one more bit of excitement before the end of things. We have an uninvited guest. This 
Um, I mean, they're pretty strong. But, uh, I don't know what our armor situation is. We'll have to take a look at our squads. A giant humanoid monster with two heads. Her quite dense hair is extremely long. She is thin. She has a recessed chin. Her eyebrows are low. Her aqua eyes are protruding. Her extremely narrow, tall ears have nearly fused lobes. She has a scratchy voice. Her somewhat narrow nose, left head. Feels like there's missing a word. Her somewhat narrow nose, comma, left head is short. Her, um, I don't know. Oh, the nose on her left head is short. Because she has two heads. Her lips are thin. Her left head is somewhat narrow. Her hair is auburn. Her skin is cinnamon. Okay. Let's take a quick look at our squad. This is going to be the last thing we do, and then we're going to wrap up for the day. Um, so the tunnel snakes. Oh, no. There it is. I was confused. Okay. The iron bows don't have a lot of armor, but they have two crossbows. The tunnel snakes, yeah, are mostly going to be wrestlers and unarmed. Um, so really what this is, is a good time to test our ranged setup. Although I think we do have some dwarves outside. You know what? Let's just run out. What could possibly go wrong? A lot. I think we should seal the gate and then shoot from the wall. Inner fortress. And I'm going to pull the outer gate lever immediately. And I'm going to have squad... I'm going to have the tunnel snakes assemble in... Um, there you go. Just in here to safety. And the iron bows, I'm going to have them assemble here on top of the wall. And before we lose dwarves to the bridge and not the Etten. Oh, wait. Door's closed. Etten's over here. Is she still moving forward? She's still moving forward. Oh, there's bolts being th fired from the top over here. I saw it. We don't have a combat report yet, but I saw a bolt. Maybe if it misses completely, you don't get a message. Oh, there's another one. Steel bolt. Fire. Still no message. It missed so much that it doesn't even count as combat. Oh, fuck it. What the? What? What was that? Oh, it was a peahen. Okay. We probably can't shoot you here. Ha <laughs> Where are you going now? Probably going to kill some other critters. Oh, there's some dwarves outside. Okay. Let's go and let's go and fight. This could turn out really poorly. Well, no, I could just keep the door closed. Who's this? I mean, you're already dead, right? Lem Gardner, you're already dead. I just keep the door closed and then we don't have to worry about anything. Lem's just gonna get exploded here. Oh, been found dead. Yep. Uh, Lem Garter Metal Crafter. That's it. Five lines of combat. You get punched in the arm, bruise the muscle. Uh, then you dodge. That's good. Then the end grabs you by the finger, punches you in the head, and the injured part explodes in the gore. There we go. over here tunnel snakes or uh, iron bows there we go we got some more shooting any chance any of that is gonna hit it's wandered off somewhere where is it Oh, you're on the edge of the map. And then you're just going to chill down here in the bottom left corner of the map. Okay, well, I don't think we've got any more dwarves out on the surface, because I think if we did, uh, the Etten would be hunting them. There we go. That's not bad. Well, here's something that's interesting. We are nearly upon autumn. If the Etten is still here when the Dwarven Caravan comes, that's going to be exciting time. But this has highlighted that it would be very nice to get our steel equipment going on. We have a lot more people who have shown up here. Um, 
so the tunnel snakes, for example, only ever had the uh, the seven people. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab um, a few more. Peasant. Oh, these are our new recruits. Farmer, stone worker. There we go. We will. Uh, I'll I'll retag you to. So over here, we're gonna go to our squad view, and we're gonna make sure that everyone in the two. Oh, refresh. Everyone in the two squads is officially tagged as a soldier. Excellent. And the big thing, it's not even about the equipment for the uh, iron bows, it's about the tunnel snakes. We need to get them some actual proper armaments. So, we've been trying to make steel, right? We should have a bunch of steel bars. We have 54 iron bars. We have 111 steel bars. Oh, that's wonderful. And the iron, uh, you know, the tunnel snakes never really started training either because, oh, uh, well, no, hold on. They, I believe, yeah, all both squads train here. Uh, ultimately, this is supposed to be the Iron Bows barracks, but they do have a little training hall, uh, so that's at least something. But yeah, so what we need is we need um, steel battle axe. We need 10 of those. We need steel breastplate. Let's have 10 of those. Steel helm, another 10. Steel greaves, 10 of those. Steel gauntlet, 10 of those. Um... We might actually end up equipping our uh, crossbow squad with steel armor later on, but we'll see. You have no armor? No, our silver? No, we don't really have silver, but steel battle axes are going to be better probably than silver warhammer. Plus, it's cool. So, we're going to do that. In my personal fort, the steel battle axe squads do really well. Um, ultimately, for their uniforms, what we're really going to want to do is have them in leather cloak, um, leather dress... Or is it robe? Leather robe. Um, leather. There's another layer of leather that you can throw on them. Probably pants, I guess. Trousers? Uh, as an, and actually, you can have them wear like 10 cloaks and things too. So there you go. We'll get this set up here. Um, and at that point, our squad should be like halfway competent to go and fight. Uh, and we should have enough steel for all that, which is actually really nice to see. Um, with our archers, I could go and make... We have some leather. We don't have an infinite amount of leather, though. I don't think I'm going to make leather armor for our archer squad. They'll probably just... Maybe they'll be in lighter armor. Maybe they'll just have just like just some chain mail and a helmet or something like that. Um, because they don't need to be quite as strong to be the archers. That's one thing we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, our melee dwarves in all this armor, we're going to have to make sure they're strong. Otherwise, they're going to start moving really slow. So we'll either have to train their strength, or we can move things around. So if we have, uh, we can take a look at our military. If one of the soldiers in the Iron Bows is really strong, we can move them to the Tunnel Snakes, for example. <laughs> Greek Squad, Naked Master Wrestlers. I mean, that would be very cool. I think it'd be very short-lived, but it would be very, very cool. There you go. And then we'll have a farm. In fact, at this point, uh, this, this is shallow enough that we can have our dwarves come down here and uh, start working on the farm plots. Uh, some, are somebody saying no no soil mud for farm? What? What? Oh, maybe maybe the two deep ones, maybe the places with two units of water, uh, aren't valid targets for the farm. And yeah, we we talked about the pumps as like a way to to weight train. We may in fact do something like that. So presumably, this is slowly dripping over. Yeah, you can see there's, there's starting to be some empty spots over here. Because, yeah, setting up the farms is going to be really nice. Mostly because, uh, like, we don't need a huge amount of plump, plump helmet production. We still have our cabbages. We do have some pigs and things like that going on. Uh, we can get our eggs going um, now that we've been uh, building our little, uh, our little flesh reaper floor here, which we'll do like a big smooth stone command over here for this area. Um, so yeah, we can get, we can get, like, a more meat production. So food's gonna be okay. Uh, we should still be able to make enough booze out of cabbages. Uh, but we'll get a little bit of plump helmets going on down here. We don't need a ton. Um, and then, oh, we get some natural growth, which happens sometimes. Some sweet pods are growing over here. Excellent. Uh, but really, it's about getting, if we can get the cloth industry going on, that'll be really nice. And we can get everyone some fresh, fresh outfits. Moods are still really good, though. No, we have no unhappy dwarves whatsoever. Is, uh... We have a ghost. Woo. Yeah, it's still here, but yeah, we have a ghost. 
which means what we have to do is we have to go to our craft dwarfs and we have to engrave a slab to a ghost. And there may be some we have bodies for, but we can just slab anyone who's not memorialized. Which is everyone... Oh, I'm out of room here. Uh, we'll just start with those. We'll install those slabs. And then we'll finish the others. Well, I guess I could start the second one. So you got as far as Elif. So if I add here... So Erica is entombed. Good. That's what we want. There you go. So everyone's now going to be engraved. And then we'll just have to plop them somewhere to stop the ghost from being a problem. Yeah, the, the crypt is probably going to be, I think, one level below the life miner stage. What I'm going to do... I'm going to carve it out right now. And then we're going to stop the stream. It's going to look a lot like the dormitory. Catacombs. So it's going to be down here, I think. Something like that. We can expand it. Put it where the museum is. Mean. Well, the museum only has so much room. And I like the idea that like we have the coffin of the very first fallen dwarf right over here, Erica Hoff. So far, uh, except for the one dwarf that was maybe killed by a bridge. Other than that, all the kills have come from were creatures, which continue to be the scariest problem in all of Dwarf Fortress. All right, so um, a kiss for luck should be streaming. Has been streaming for a half an hour now. 40 minutes, in fact. Oof, that is a long stream. We got some uh, Among Us being played over there. We're going to raid over there. Next live stream is going to be on Monday for Football Manager. Thank you, everyone who came out, everyone who subscribed, everyone who contributed to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund. Uh, my throat is killing me now. have not had enough water. haven't gotten enough to take a break. This game is terrible. We do need to get a vamp in this fort. That would be awesome. It would be excellent. Vampires don't bother me as all. Well. Oh, we lose a couple of vamp. At least they don't multiply. Unless you want it. Thanks a lot, everyone. I'll see you on Monday for uh, Football Manager. And then next Saturday, more Dwarf Fortress.